Okay. I have to behave. Recording in progress. Call the meeting to order uh, of the NCIP April 21st meeting. Uh, Tom, I think you have a statement you got to read. Yes, I do. It'll take me a minute. Uh, uh, welcome to the April 21st meeting of the Monterey Neighborhood and Community Development Program. That's our NCIP program. We encourage members of the public to join our meeting via Zoom Gov, which is a secure service for use by government agencies. Joining on Zoom is preferred because there is no lag time when you're connected to the meeting. However, this meeting is also streamed live on youtube.com forward slash city of Monterey with a delay of approximately 10 seconds and on Comcast channel 25 with a delay of up to 90 seconds. If you plan on making a public comment, please join the meeting using Zoom Gov on the app or by telephone, making sure you join in time to accommodate the delay. To join the meeting from Zoom on your computer or phone, use the link or phone number on the agenda, which you can find at iSearchMonterey.org. And since this meeting has already begun, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To join by telephone, dial 833-568-8864. It's a toll-free number. And then enter the webinar ID, which is 160-986. 1607 and the pound symbol or the hashtag. And if prompted to enter a participant ID, plus press the hashtag button again. This information is available at the top of tonight's agenda in the red text and details instructions on using Zoom are also available at monterey.org forward slash public meetings. To make a comment this evening, please raise your hand using Zoom or if you are connected by telephone, dial star nine to raise your hand, then star six to unmute yourself. Public commenters will be muted until it is their turn to speak. We ask that public commenters turn off TV or computer speakers or go to another room while connected by phone as any background noise will interfere with the broadcast. Each public speaker will be called on in the order that their hands were raised. The chair has designated well, the chair may designate a time limit for tonight's meeting um, and a countdown timer will be shown on the screen. If you are connected live on Zoom, the timer is accurate with no delay. Please stay within your time limit so that we won't have, you won't have to be cut off. And thank you. We look forward to receiving your comments this evening. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Uh, next, I, if we get a roll call, please. Melissa. Okie doke. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me fine? Yes, we can. Great. Okie doke. Um, Aguajito Oaks. Alta Mesa. Here. Casanova Oak Knoll. Here. Deer Flats. Here. Del Monte Beach. Here. Del Monte Grove Laguna Grande. Here. Downtown. Here on the phone. The link's not working. Thanks, Kurt. Um, Fisherman Flats? Here. Glenwood? Here. Monterey Vista? Here. New Monterey? Here. Oak Grove? Here. Old Town? Here. Skyline? Hello. <laughs> and then Villa Del Monte? Good evening. Here. Okie doke. Hey, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comments. This is the opportunity for anyone in the public to speak to address the NCIP on any issue that's within the preview of the NCIP, but is not on tonight's agenda. Uh, key, let me know if we have anyone from the public. We have no hands raised. I should have said, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand or... <laughs> Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comments and we'll move on to approval of minutes. 
Uh, does anyone have any, hopefully everyone had a chance to read the minutes. Does anyone have any comments or questions or corrections? If you do, please raise your hand. I'm different, different being here instead of just on. Uh, okay, see now, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I, I, I'll it, second. Been moved by Skyline, seconded by Glenwood. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, I, we need. Do we need to do this with roll call, or can we just do? Should be a roll call vote. Yeah. Roll, call. roll call is probably the best bet, Rick. Okay. Um, Alta Mesa. Yes. Casanova Oakno. Yes. Deer Flats. Yes. Del Monte Beach. Yes. Del Monte Grove Laguna Grande. Yes. Downtown? Yes. Fisherman Flats? Yes. Glenwood? Yes. Monterey Vista? Yes. New Monterey? Yes. Oak Grove? Oak Grove, Luce? Cannot, un okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Old Town? Yes. Skyline? Yes. And Villa Del Monte. Yes. Okie doke. Well, minutes are approved. Uh, next item would be information reports and staff comments. Tom, do you want to give us the pur purpose for tonight's meeting? The purpose for tonight's meeting um, is really to go through each of the, well, the first half of the neighborhoods to review the projects that were nominated um, this year. And we'll just go through, just briefly provide a description. We'll make sure all questions are answered from the committee members, the representatives and alternates. And uh, the actual public comment meeting will be next month. So we'll get through all the projects uh, right now to try and make sure that all the committee members are um, understand what each project involves and then um, answer any questions. That is the purpose of this evening's meeting. Thank you, Tom. And I think we're gonna take it neighborhood by neighborhood as we move through this. Uh, at the end of the presentation by Tom, then be questions or comments by the neighborhood who it is, other committee members, then we'll open it to the public for any comments, close it, and then move on to the next neighborhood because there's actually no voting tonight on any items. Correct. Uh, anything else? No, there were um, just several things that uh, the training. Yep, I, okay. that's under the NCPI spokesperson report. There are a couple of different items I wanted to bring up. Uh, I believe we all were, received in the last few weeks a email with a link for uh, Brown Act training, uh, particularly for any of the new members. Uh, it would be good to go through and, and I guess it's a video to watch or Yes, it's the uh, the presentation that um, the, the city attorney's office presented. It was about a year ago, okay. and it was just a recording. So if anyone feels they need a refresher, please, but also anyone who has not gone through it before should. Also, we're going to be receiving uh, in the next uh, week or two, at some time soon, uh, a, a thing from HR, which will include uh, information on anti-harassment training. All commissioners, as well as staff and others in the city are required to go through that, that program. So we'll be getting information on that as well. So please, when you get that, just go ahead and go forward with doing what's involved. Dennis. If I've done that for the fire department, do I have to do it again for this committee? Same here. We'll check with We'll, we'll check and see. I would think question. probably not, but we'll verify and make sure. I mean, if we have to do a police background check, we have to do it for each agency, but I, I don't know in this case <laughs> if this yeah. is required. Now let's, um, if you could just verify whether or not that yes. those who have already had it from the city need to do it again or not. I believe that's good. The, um, the training just, it's due June 30th, which is the end of our fiscal year. So okay. it's a one hour training. Okay. That's all. <laughs> Uh, and it's online too, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll move on public appearance items. Uh, tonight's the meat of tonight's meeting, which is 
uh, review of the project starting with Aguida Oaks, which although it's first, it doesn't have any projects. So that should be starting with Alta Mesa and then we'll go through New Monterey tonight. In two weeks, then we'll go from next neighborhood after New Monterey would be Oak Grove. Yes. Right? Oak Grove through Villa Del Monte and then citywide. Correct. Uh, you're gonna notice on your uh, project list that all those projects that were previously approved and defunded that were citywide are citywide once again. So they will be at the end of it during the citywide section. The listing notes what they were for the neighborhood one from our previous list, because that corresponds to what is in the, the big book. So they're, they're not gonna redo this and change all the order of everything. So if you need to find the original submittal paperwork for one that's now citywide, see what it was mistakenly done before, and we can find that in here. Those will all be at the end. Uh, there are different, pro I know all the different neighborhoods met with Tom and talked about projects that may have been done or things of that nature. And I believe he's planning on addressing that at the start of each neighborhood's projects as we go through. Mm -hmm. but take it away, Tom, with Alta Mesa. Thank you. And I'm hoping to just run through this. I think uh, most of the committee is already familiar with the projects that were defunded. I've got um, just a few slides at the very beginning, just presenting an overall kind of picture of where we are. So here's just a map of the neighborhoods. Um, this is the flow chart that's in the procedures, the NTIP procedures manual. And tonight we're beginning to review the projects. So we've gone through, we've accepted new uh, nominations. We've screened those um, back last month and now we're beginning to review the projects. Um, the first half will be tonight, and then in two weeks, we'll go through the second half. And again, the first time through, the focus is on educating the committee members, the representatives and alternates on what the projects are. Um, after that, there will be a public comment, um, or the focus will be just on accepting comments from the public and people who are advocating for their projects. Um, as you see, maybe down at the bottom here, let's see if I can thing over here june 16th is actually the date of when uh the voting night will occur and then city council right at the very bottom uh will occur on september 20th this year um, so again this is just the same schedule tonight we're um april 21st we're beginning to review the projects um i think everyone has a handle on this so i'll keep moving and then um, this year, an unusual year, um, as we all recall, the, the about well, 120 projects were defunded by city council in 2020. Those projects are on the list to be discussed this year, as are 65 projects that were nominated in 2020, but never acted upon. They were never, we, we got to the screening point and then COVID hit and now we're finally getting back to those 65. And then also this year, there were 20 projects that were submitted um, this year. So add that all up, it's a total of just over 200 projects um, by neighborhood. As um, the chair mentioned earlier, Aguajito Oaks has none. Um, and then each of the neighborhoods um, range from, uh, well, Deer Flats has one, but New Monterey tonight, um, has 24, Monterey Vista has 21. Those are the, the big ones. Uh, the first half of the neighborhoods through New Monterey end up being 103 projects. So it's actually right down the middle of the line. So that's good. Um, the second half of the neighborhoods, Oak Grove, Old Town, Ryan Ranch, Skyline, Villa Del Monte, and then community-wide has a whopping 65 um, that are mostly coming back some new ones as well. Um, so tonight I'm just gonna go neighborhood by neighborhood. Aguajito Oaks, there were no projects that were nominated this year or carried over from uh, earlier. So we'll move on to Alta Mesa. And Alta Mesa this year had nine projects that were nominated. Of the nine projects, um, one, two, four, and six are completed. 
So there's really no need to discuss them further. These were just projects that were completed either during the pandemic or before that were just never closed out. So they're still on the list. Um, but the, the first projects one, two, four, and then project six have been completed. Um, so just running through them, the next projects on that list um, are three for the Don Davi trail improvements. Um, the first um, AM5 is for the design and uh, a lot of the work on that has been completed. I think we're at the environmental um, monitoring stage for that project, um, but we will um, pick that up. We've got, uh, so how I set this up is just the, the project. So AM5, the, the description of the project, the title of it, the year that it was first approved. So this was a 2018 project that was approved. Um, and the current estimate that we have to do the entire design would be $75,000. So what we are proposing to do, uh, we have rough estimates. You'll see them for all the projects this evening. They are ballpark estimates. They're not um, detailed. When we find out what the, which projects the committee has prioritized, we'll dive in and do a, a more accurate um, cost estimate for those projects before they go to city council. So these are just kind of ballpark to give you an idea of um, what's involved on each one of these projects. Um, so for the design, the total of that was about $75,000. For the trail improvements, phase one is the, uh, oh, oh man, blew it. I was so excited about using this little pointer. There, um, up at Munris, um, it's, it's doing some trailhead improvements, uh, street crossing and just getting things set from the street, um, as well as uh, segment four. So for construction, the first piece of construction that was approved in 2019 included that section, the light blue, plus the improvements along Don Davi Lane and up toward Munris. Um, phase two would be the next um, section of trail. And the way I read the description of projects, depending on how much was allocated toward it, would help us determine which of the remaining sections would be funded. Right now we've chosen the, the shortest one, which looks like five, it's adjacent to four. Um, the cost of that we're expecting, it's gonna be ballpark, we had $65,000 just to do the trail. Next project is uh, Iris Canyon at Via Marata, the intersection for flood control. Uh, it's a very flat section of road and the drainage along um, Iris Canyon gets backed up during larger storms. So uh, we have a design for this. Um, Steve told me yesterday, um, it's also eligible for measure P and S funding. So it does not, it's not required to be funded by NCIP. Um, so that's that project. And then the next one here uh, was nominated this year. It's for a giant tree, this large eucalyptus tree here on El Dorado Street. Um, someone submitted a project to have it removed. Uh, we've spoken with Parks and Rec and uh, Louis Marcuso figured it would be about, uh, well, $15,000 to get that tree out of there. And that is all the projects that are um, up for discussion in Alta Mesa this evening. Are there any questions? Okay, I just got some items to add for, for the public and for the committee. The Dundavi Creek Path was a project put in by the neighbors who live up there. It, the whole goal behind it, I don't know if any of you have ever actually walked that trail that's through there, that's actually a named trail. Uh, it's rather rugged, uh, but part, one of the main reasons for it is to facilitate the ease of the police to patrol it, because that one end is over and over again, a very, very large camp. Uh, and for the phase one improvements, 
it's not necessarily what we'd like to have as phase one, but we have to because it's the ADA access to the trail. So nothing else can happen if you don't do that one first. <laughs> uh, originally phase two was a pot of money to go to the next segment. I think Tom, the one you suggested makes sense to be connected to area four. The other reason area four was part of the first phase is if that isn't done soon, that will be a wetland and there will never be a trail going through there. <laughs> so it, it's called yeah, fixing the, a major problem. Right now, literally, it's very difficult to actually complete a hike on that trail because of that section. Uh, it gets very, very wet. Uh, yeah, tree is a tree. Uh, I know a number of the neighbors have issues with it and its impact on the walkway around it. I'd like to know the city forester's opinion on it. Uh, and, and as far as the, 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 the drainage at Iris Canyon and Via Morada, it is a problem, but it's nice to see that PNS could take care of it. So while it is technically a project we could do, uh, let's keep that in mind that there are other sources of funds for it. That's it from my standpoint of the, the projects. Anyone else have any comments or questions on any of the Alta Mesa projects? Dennis. You said you'd want the forester to opine about the tree. Last I heard we didn't have a forester, or do we? Or, or our interim forester. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we do, there is an interim forester um, who is, is, well, we spoke with Louie yesterday, and he mentioned that um, they had spoken about this tree, but we'll get some official. I did just would love, yeah. Well, well, then I know if we try to take a tree down on any of our lots, we've got to go through a whole process. And I think the city should go through the same process general public goes through. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be nice to know before voting whether or not, you know, it's blessed. Yes. Uh, any other questions or comments? Any well, this is, is there any member or, or remote member of the committee or public that wishes to speak on this? We've got no hands raised. Okay, perfect. In which case, let's move on to next neighborhood. Next neighborhood, Casanova Oak Knoll. Um, there are seven projects that are nominated and on the list. Um, of the seven, two of those have been completed. So, um, Casanova Oak Knoll, project number two, the North Fremont Street widening project, was a study that was um, conducted prior to redoing the street and adding the bike lane down the center there. So that was completed a while ago. And then the uh, Casanova Oak Knoll Park, the playground equipment replacement has been completed as well. So um, we'll move on to project number one, which is the Casanova Melway exit. Um, this was a project from 2012. It was completed except for, according to Richard, um, this uh, crosswalk sign. There's only one when you're going uphill. When you're coming downhill, there needs to be another sign over here. So that's the last piece and this project will be completed after that. Uh, project number four, the Fairground Road Airport Road Lighting Project. This was submitted by, I believe it was the, the Fairgrounds, the county, what the district, um, and they just are looking to get some more lighting installed on the utility poles. Um, one of the things that I've heard discussed as well is um, Pedestrian scale lighting, so that would be like a bollard that would be closer to the ground. So we had a range of the cost there, of like $40,000 to add some lighting onto the poles. Um, if we went with bollards or something, it could go higher than that. That's the reason for the range. Um, project number five is the Casanova Oak Knoll Park improvements. And um, one of the more significant components of this was the fencing around and you could see I tried to take a photo it's kind of blurry on my screen here but on the left is the edge of the play area which has like a it's a black it's not exactly wrought iron but it has that look so they're vertical um, slots that um, would 
the neighborhood would like the, that style of fence to be continued around the rest of the park. That's a big piece of that. And then project number six was this uh, curve a spinner play structure. And um, we'll let Richard explain it, but uh, my understanding is the children of the neighborhood picked this one out. So this is something that they're excited about. Project number seven is the Mark Thomas Road um, bike and pedestrian connection. So this is a prog project that's actually in the MOVE Monterey, the multimodal transportation plan that city prepared. Um, the project is to create a bike lane that goes from North Fremont. Um, it goes up Airport Road, down Fairground Road, and onto Mark Thomas, and then across Sloat back down to Del Monte, and then the Rec Trail is right there also. So this is a uh, project that's included in the plan already. So um, the rough estimate for that at this point is $125,000. And those are the actually five Casanova Oak Knoll projects. I know Richard is on the line, so. Um, what was the amount of COK1 again? In one, uh, $5,000, it's okay. just a, it's a sign. It's just a pedestrian crossing sign. Richard, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to speak to on your project? Yes. Yes. Uh, on COK1, there's only a pedestrian crossing sign needed. Does it have to go through the whole funding process to finish off this $275,000 mid-block crossing? Or can we get the sign installed? We can get the sign installed. Well, then we can cross that project off. Great. Uh, there were two fatalities there last year, motorcycle accident nearby. So mid-block crosswalks uh, uh, really have to be signed well because it's a dangerous situation. People don't expect a crosswalk in the middle of the street, but that's where all the apartment dwellers cross to go to Safeway. And we sat there, we sat there and took a poll, and nobody went down to Fremont to go 400 yards out of their way. They all crossed the street there, so it works beautifully. City did a great job installing it. Um, uh, let's see. The playground equipment is in. We just have this blank spot, and we did a poll of the after-school children. Uh, there were at least 100 kids that participated. They just love that little spinner there. So uh, that's one piece of equipment. We, it's out of a catalog. Uh, we've had meetings about it, so there's no study that's needed. Uh, the fairgrounds lighting, that would be COK4. We were only discussing pole lighting and nobody ever brought up the bollard lighting. So that's all new information to me. We did have meetings out there with the fair manager and Jeff Krebs. We walked the whole street, we planned the whole thing. And basically it's just jet black there. There's just no street lighting. All the events they have there, the neighborhood walkers, um, you can't even see your feet when you're walking. So that project is a viable project. Uh, the Mark Thomas Bikeway, I want to talk about a little bit. Our problem in Casanova Oak Knoll is the only way to go to downtown in Monterey from my neighborhood is to ride in the street on Casa Verde where there's dozens of driveways and cross streets. So we came up with the idea of going down Mark Thomas at a low cost project. So instead of riding in the street, and what you have to do now on a very fast street, uh, Jeff came up with the idea of widening the sidewalk along the freeway side, narrowing the lanes, so we would have a separated bikeway from Mark Thomas Bridge to Slope and run along the NPS fence where the sidewalk is currently to go to Del Monte to cross over to the rec trail. 
the only safe bike trail is a separated bike trail. Uh, when you get on the street with a car, it's called you lose. So um, uh, that's that project. And uh, let's see what's left here. I'm not sure what project eight is, Tom, the North Fremont beautification. Yeah, that's one that we moved to citywide. Okay. That was the one, it's uh, to, I guess, basically re-landscape the median out in front of Black Bear Diner on North Fremont. But it's not to change the entry site, is it? My understanding it was just to do like the welcome to Monterey or uh, to the neighborhood Actually, sign. We'll be able to speak it, to that when it's on citywide. Yes, yeah, on the next so it'll be in two weeks. Okay. All right. right. But I need that explained because we have two granite entry signs on each end of Fremont. And those signs have got to be $25,000 each now. I, I don't see the purpose to change the sign unless it's faded out. Mm -hmm. But the, the rock should stay, obviously. So I know there's a member of the public that wants to speak uh, to uh, the park improvement project. First, first, we'll see if there's any other members of the commission. Uh, is there anyone else in the commission? That, uh, Hans? I have two questions on the uh, fairground road lighting. If you only use poles, are the poles close enough together to supply enough light to all of the sidewalk? I mean, part of the idea, I think, of the ballers was to get a little more continuous light. But are the poles close enough together to, to give enough light along the whole? What, what we planned was to go every other pole, and it would be adequate illumination. Uh, these are very uh, high voltage poles. These aren't a regular telephone pole. But there's existing lights. We're just filling in the gaps. Gotcha. Okay. And on the Mark Thomas um, bike path, there going across that bridge. I bike across that regularly. It is a little narrow. Is there enough room to put the to put a bike separate bike path there? Not on the bridge. But where you said the bike path would go, where then? I wasn't it begin at the bridge. At it just past the bridge to slope. Okay, so you have yeah, to- it's not practical to do on the bridge. Okay, what, so they got cal -Am put that nice second bridge right next to it without water pipe. Has anybody ever talked to cal -Am? That would be the perfect place for the bike path across there because on the other side, the bike path is right basically in line with that cal -Am water pipe bridge. It, it, it's not, but probably it's legally not a bridge, right. it's just a pipe. Yeah, but it's wide enough for a, it's like five feet wide. Okay. Uh, I, I don't I don't know if you can ride on top of that bike. Yeah, you'd have to put a, you know, you have yeah. to put a lane. It would be an bike. expensive bridge addition. And the bridge which, is there, which is yeah, nice. Which is doable. Yeah, but you're going to have to. Yeah. Connect to it is probably more than. Connect that. to it and do an entire top over it so you don't put the pipe at risk. Yeah. And still have it available to be fixed if there's leaks and, you know. You know the bureaucracy you'd have to deal with on that one. That's the yeah, <laughs> bureaucracy is there. It's, I don't think that is our race. So the entrance to the paddock at the racetrack is two railroad flat cars welded together. That's the bridge that you go over when you go over the track. So you could take something pre-engineered like that and utilize it that way. Or at least that's mm. what they did in 57, 58. Yeah, you probably can't do it legally today, but yeah. Uh, uh, one addition, Rick. Yes. Uh, on the park fence, uh, I, I'm afraid Tom got it backwards. Oh. We have a galvanized custom fence around the playground. And then from the playground up the street to the end of the park is a cyclone fence. This project is only to replace the cyclone fence with a like fence that's around the playground, but not custom. It was out of a catalog. It's, it's a very similar fence but we didn't want to go to the expense of a custom fence. So it will be galvanized, not black. The fence around the condos next door are black. Uh, the park uh, 
director wanted to continue the galvanized look to tie it in with the playground fence. Okay. Any so that's other? It. Sorry, Richard. Go ahead. That's all. Okay. Any other member of the commission? If not, we'll go to the member of the public who wishes to speak. I don't know. This is Dwayne. I had my hand up. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, I just asked Tom when any of these uh, current projects are diverted to citywide, to uh, just let us know so I can make the note. Okay. So I guess um, number eight was, yeah. and we'll we can get a list out to everyone okay. of which ones got moved over. But if it was citywide or community wide what we're going to be calling them now um, before we're going to put it back on community wide this time so um cok eight is the only one in the casanova oak Knoll neighborhood and there were two ultimation ones that moved to city yes I mean, anyway yeah and there there are a number you'll notice as we go through the list a number of them are just missing that's where they went to And actually, back in the back of the list where the citywide starts, there's a section that starts go as it goes through the neighborhoods that indicates what it used was previously. So you'll be able to find and see the one that was COAK, the COAK eight back back in that section. Okay. Is there any member of the public wishing to speak to Castanova Oak Knoll? We actually have a hand raised with the panelists. Yes. Okay. Good evening. I just wanted to provide a little clarity on the Calam Bridge. It was explored dramatically and extensively to try to put bike lanes on top of that bridge, uh, that pipe bridge. Uh, at the end of the day, it was not feasible due to the, the safety of that water line and the design changes that would have to be done to accommodate bike traffic on that pipe bridge. So I just wanted to make sure that that was understood by the by the panelists that the the pipe the Calam pipe across is is not feasible and it would have to be something with the bridge or something else that would have to be done for that. That was all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Yep, you have a hand. Whoop, actually, nope. <laughs> Left and came back. We have Robert Yoha. Robert, go ahead, please. <laughs> Robert, you want go ahead. We can't hear you. Unmute, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. OK, if I don't keep my mouse on that button, it knocks me off. So you can hear me now. Yes, we can. OK, um, I'd like to speak in support of the fence. Uh, I've walked a petition, and 100% of the neighbors facing the fence support it. It's the last bit of blight in our neighborhood. Um, the condos next to us have replaced their old cyclone fence with a more expensive metal picket fence. When they went through that, I promised I would try to get rid of our chain link fence that we have to face. It's been about an eight year process. Uh, two years, you can give credit to COVID. Uh, we have a situation there where it is a little bit of a blight. When the school kids get dropped off, they no longer leave trash in front of the cyclone fence by the Cypress condominiums. They leave it in front of the cyclone fence near the park. Uh, it just doesn't look right for the neighborhood. It doesn't have that feel anymore. Uh, when the Cypress condominiums initially put in a cyclone fence, the Architectural Design Review Committee denied it, the Planning Commission denied it, and their condo owners eventually said, tear the cyclone fence down, replace it with a picket fence. Uh, we would like to have the same type of picket fence that's up on top of Hilltop Park. They had a cyclone fence and that was replaced. Uh, it would very much help our neighborhood. Uh, that's the last bit of uh, what I would call neighborhood blight. And it's a perfect project for a neighborhood improvement program. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other members of the public, Elisa? Yes, we have a phone number here, but you have to unmute.
Hi, this is Kayla Fossum, president of Villa Del Monte Neighborhood, right across uh, Fremont from Casanova Oak Knolls. And I just have a question on the project for the lights on uh, Airport Road and Fairgrounds Road. Is the Fairgrounds willing to kick any money into this project? That's Could that be explored? That's my only question. Thank you. And I know that it has been discussed. So I, I think that they would be open to that. I have not heard that it's um, going to all be on... <clears throat> uh, funded by NCIP, but um, that's something that we will investigate. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, any other members of the public? Other I see nope. none. Let's, <laughs> let's move on to the next neighborhood, Tom. Great. Thank you. All right. Dear Flats, there is one small project in Deer Flats um, was submitted in 2020. The, um, this is a previous NCIP project um, the, to install benches at the Deer Flats Park. Um, they were installed instead of um, facing the park, which was the neighborhood's uh, desire, they got installed facing the street. So this would just be to basically to pick those up and spin them 180 degrees. <laughs> Um, and I know Dave is here and can speak to this as well. That's the only project that we had in the Deer Flats neighborhood. Dave, you want to speak to this? Yeah, the only other thing uh, that we uh, included in that uh, request was, you can see there's a section of chain link fence that's behind the benches that if they were spun around and maybe moved forward in the park that that uh, could follow the fence line along the street, maybe with a break there get into where those benches are. Okay. Any any members of the commission have any questions or comments? Is there any member of the public? Richard just raised his hand. Richard, go ahead. Yes. Can you tell me what happened to Deer Flats one and two? Let me look it up. They're on my list. Yeah. I'm guessing. They were moved to citywide 22 and 23. Okay, thank you. On, on page 11 of our packet in the chart, that's where the one start of the projects that got moved to, to citywide, so. Thank you. Any, Dennis? So let me understand DF3, what was built and the benches are backwards. Is this project closed out? Yes. So we don't have a chance to have a contingency overrun to fix That's it. correct. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, my suggestion was going to be, let's have a contingency overrun, turn the benches around. Yeah. Actually, that was a 2020 project, so it was never actually funded. Okay. To, yeah. It was in the process last time, but never finished. The you know, 2020 projects we were screening, but we never finished. So what funds put the benches in in the first place? Before, Way before 2020. But was it NIP? That's what I understand. Dave, do you know? No, that was well before my time. It was way back when the neighborhood was first established. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember a project. We've done projects for that park, but I don't remember one for the benches, but it doesn't mean they weren't. It doesn't make a lot of sense how they were installed. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering if it was parks that installed it, maybe it's parks that needs to correct it. <laughs> I doubt anyone is going to remember who installed it at this point, but. Uh, is there any other member of the commission or member of the public? Okay, let's move on Del Monte Beach. Excellent. Del Monte Beach has 12 projects that were nominated um, this year. And starting with uh, number one is uh, the walkway replacements. Um, 
that um, actually I'm looking at the the list like further down the projects that are um, I'll say like duplicates in this case come up and it's a like a yellowish orangish color. Um, so Del Monte Beach project number eight was a boardwalk replacement. Number nine was a Del Monte Beach walkway improvements. Um, project number 10 was a boardwalk repair and number 11 was a Tide Avenue Beach boardwalk replacement. Um, they were all very similar projects. I think each of them was a little bit different in the locations that they had done, but um, we discussed it and thought it would be more straightforward to just have one project that covered all of them. Or there's two. Yeah, to be correct, it's like a smorgasbord of, of repair, but the question is repair versus replace. So we were going to combine uh, or get rid of eight and nine because they're the same as one and they're all about repair. And then 11 is the concept of replace and, and don't even try to repair it. So it's, and it's, that depends on the costs. So 11 stays. 11, 11 would stay. So I would cross out eight and nine. But keep 11. And 10 was removed um, earlier as well. Mm -hmm. So 11 stays. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, let's, we'll just, I'll start walking through them. So let's remove them. Like this that. will change the, the whole thing. So we'll put 11 back. I was thinking that it was a duplicate of one, but 11 will keep. Um, but this, I'm not, I tried to figure this out. I was, it was beyond me, I'm sorry. Um, but I know there's boardwalk all along over here and um, the different projects had different locations, but um, we were thinking that we could allocate $50,000 this year toward the repair of those that uh, parks could use to, to fix what was needed there. Uh, project number two is the Spray Avenue Tot Lot. There was a gazebo there that was approved as a project uh, in 2017. Approximate cost for that would be $98,000. Um, and that's on the, you can see a photo of the Tot Lot there on Spray Avenue. Project number three is the Beachway Toilets. Um, one of the, the things well, that was approved in 2018 and then it was defunded um, in 2020 by council, but one of the, the things that we'll, you will see as we go through the projects, there are a number of restroom projects and there is one um, community-wide project number nine um, that is a study to see where in the city, it's going to look at all the locations citywide to see where and how many restrooms are needed uh, before we start uh, putting money into constructing things that may not be needed. So this one uh, we put as uh, not applicable for the price on this one. Uh, we did have a price back in 2018 when we had done it, but uh, we really like to get the, the study completed to see how many restrooms we need and where they're gonna be. Project number four was the Del Monte Beach Tide Avenue security camera. Um, this was approved in 2019 and we had allocated about $30,000 for it. Um, one of the issues with this project, however, is that the city has no policy um, for um, installing security cameras in public spaces. So um, what will have to happen before we can do anything on this was that um, it'll have to go to the, the, the police department will be involved, the city attorney will be involved, the city council will approve a, a policy for doing that. So um, it's not Good. shovel ready quite yet. Um, the project number five is the Spray Avenue Tot Lot. This is resurfacing. Um, this would be to install the rubberized uh, material this is one that, that Louis thought it would be really good to have um, sections to be used rather than pouring the entire thing in one. That's one option to do, but he thought it would be easier to replace when they wear out and get old if they're just sections. So that was something he was looking forward to. He, he liked this project. 
Um, project number six is the Rec Trail Casa Verde Way signage. So this was intended to be signs for the people on the Rec Trail. I'm looking at Jamie to make sure I'm not speaking here to uh, slow down as they approach that intersection. Um, one of the other projects that remained active in 2020 is to redo the rec trail to to redesign this intersection to make it safer for this crossing. So um, the current concept, I think, is to, to bring the rec trail down to the intersection closer so they can operate as one. So it will be um, something that should be finished. I think by the end of this year, the design is supposed to be set at least in concept, um, but it's something that um, we've been working on for the last oh, six to 12 months on that one. And then uh, project number 12 was submitted this year. Someone um, asked if we could get some bike link was the uh, proprietary system, but it's basically a bike locker. You can see it in the back uh, behind the woman smiling with her card. Uh, you basically, you purchase a card, you put money onto it, and then you can use them at different um, lockers throughout. Uh, the map on the left shows the blue dots are actual facilities. So it's pretty popular up in the Bay Area, but it hasn't come down as far as, um, Monterey Bay this far. Looks like there's a few in Santa Cruz, city of. So um, we looked at preliminary costs for installing them. It would be about $5,000, um, depending on like a piece. So if we got one, it would be about $5,000 if there's 20. At this point, we're just assuming it's going to be about $100,000. The This would be to install the locker. Um, there's probably maintenance that's required that we'd have to see how much that would be. Um, and just, you know, we'll have to figure that into, it would be probably parts they or also generate revenue though. Um, they can. So we'd have to learn more about okay. it. So. Cause I'm assuming the bike link that we're seeing the picture is a third party that does it and, and makes money off of yes. it. Yes. So. Yes. I guess my question is, have, do they install them and we just license, the city licenses them and gets a piece of the cut and they cover all the costs? We'll be finding out. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, project number 13, um, this is another one that had me confused, the Tide Avenue Beachway Habitat Protection and Park Improvements. But this is for um, improvements to the, the dunes and uh, removing the non-native species and um uh, just improvements to the park so um that we had a preliminary estimate of 105 so improvements in the way of restoration not improvements in the way of adding active park facilities correct that's correct yes and the the thing that did confuse me about this is there was another project submitted dmb project number seven that we moved to citywide um, it appeared to be, it was submitted in the Del Monte Beach neighborhood, but it appeared to be um, further downtown or in um, Oak Grove or something. So we, we moved that to citywide and that was for fencing as well. So, and that are, those are the projects for uh, Del Monte Beach. Jamie, do you want to speak to Anna? Yeah, let me, let me clarify that first the smorgasbord so we've been spending as an NIP about 15,000 a year um, replacing pieces of the boardwalk as it breaks down. Um, during the last couple of years, we had a lot more people working from home and walking on that and, and a ton more visitors too, because Google has us as the primary beach when you search for Monterey. And we, in this last couple of years, have had a ton of accidents. And I thought, I'm not talking falling, I'm talking breaking things. Um, the original wooden walkway was put in in 95 and it's still there except for the work that we as a committee have done in little sections and so so the the question is this either we um, put aside another pot of money and get in there and get the worst of it done because they they ran through what we had left for them before we closed down or we look at, at maybe that whole initial section um, but that price tag could be in this environment quite high. So, so we're going to keep both of those projects on the list and then let the committee decide when it comes time how that fits in. But I, I can say 
when we talk about safety as a priority, oh yeah, this is way up there as a, a safety concern right now. So DMB1 is fixing sections of it. DMB11 is replacing completely a piece of it. Yeah, the, okay. so DMB11 will be replacing the initial uh, installation, which was the entire length of, of the first block of tide. So, okay. uh, so that's, that's the difference between one and 11. Uh, Spray, Avenue, Spray Avenue gazebo is expensive because I believe it has in it all of those wonderful ADA regradings that, that we talked about in such detail. Um, the, the Beachway Toilets were not, was number one in the year that it was approved, and um, there's a considerable amount of people that are in favor of getting that done. There are also people that are concerned and will probably come to speak at the public comment. And so that's why the suggestion was put forward by the city that this study might help because there are issues around having publicly available restrooms in the middle of the neighborhood. So, and yet the public has uh, limited facilities now when they're in that beach and it's a very, very popular beach now. Um, the, the security camera was also a number one uh, in the year that it was approved. And I'll remind the committee that the committee approved it um, knowing that we would have some legwork to do to get the policies in place. And uh, so the, the policy work was put on hold. That was me. If I didn't have the money to get it done, I wasn't actually gonna go write the policy. So we do <laughs> need to get that started. Um, so rec trail signage, uh, we did meet with the city about getting some signage in already. And with the redesign coming up so short, the city traffic department did not have any recommendations uh, as to what to do with this if we had this money available. So just keep that in mind. Um, 11 we've talked about, that's the whole block. And uh, the lockers is a, a new concept as you hear. I think it's important, this committee brings in new ideas. And this is one of those new ideas. Is this the right time for that new idea? And do we, I, we'll, we'll have to know when we have more data. Um, and then the habitat, we have spent, the last project we had is $125,000 to, to basically do the initial work to restore that habitat. And that include planting and weed pulling and so on. And that was a great success. But I believe that was five, six years ago. I don't Probably remember. <laughs> and so well, COVID has been two. So. Okay. That kind of knocks <laughs> a whole lot of time off. And so what this is, is literally, we have a lot of those plants that are now established, um, but we also have invasive species that are creeping back in and getting in the way of that work. So this is actually gardening by the experts um, with a bunch of volunteers. The neighborhood actually steps in and gets down on their hands and knees and does guided work as well. But it's, uh, I suspect the price is high because it's a lot of, of ground that we're gonna cover in this. So, and that's that's kind of the backstory. And we'll come back with the neighborhood's own priorities now that we have costs. Um, at, oh, and by the toilets was 400,000 is what that was. So for one, <laughs> so okay, that's it. Any other member of the commission have questions? Hans. I have a question. What is the latest kind of idea of making these walkways? They've all, original ones were in wood and wood, would uh, definitely disintegrates and splinters and so forth versus the treks that tends to be potentially slippery and so forth. So I was wondering, what is the latest latest in uh, the idea of boardwalks? Well, I'll, I'll defer to the city for the expertise, but I can tell you the neighbors actually like the wood because the trek is very slippery. And, and a lot of our neighbors don't want to take that kind of risk. Um, and, and, and so I said 96. So it, that wood has held up pretty good. You know, if we can get another run on that, you know, is that a good investment? I haven't actually penciled it out, but I suspect that's pretty good. So my other comment is on bike lockers. I know we used them a lot up in Seattle and they're really, you know, good in for keeping bikes safe. But when you're right on the beach, I do not recommend the metal ones. They corrode really fast. Uh, they make plastic ones. They there's, it's hard to find good plastic ones, but there are, there, I think there are some good, better plastic ones that just won't corrode. And for that area, probably the plastic ones will be, will last longer. Well, thank you. I think that helps. And I think the other thing is you have view corridors. Um, you know, that whole beach is being looked across and looked at. So we need to look at something that yeah. was fitting to the space. Right. 
So thank you. Okay. Any other member of the public? I mean, excuse me, of the commission. Dennis. So for $5,000, how many bikes can I park? One. One. Two. Two. But they have you, to be friends with the same lock. No, there are sidewalks. Oh, there are sidewalks. Okay. So you're going to have two people park. Right. Yeah, that being the case, we can probably only fit two lockers. Okay. Any other member of the commission? Or is there any hands up, Elisa? Nope, no hands. Okay, any member of the public? No hands. Okay, let's move on to Del Monte Grove Laguna Grande. There are 11 projects that are on the docket. It's not a docket, but on the list. Um, this evening, the Monte Grove Laguna Grande, the traffic calming project was completed um, last summer. So that one, um, it's done. It's We're ticking it off the list. Then uh, we've got 10 other ones as well that will start going through. The first one is for a memorial um, sign was what the application called for. But in speaking with the traffic advisory committee, um, several weeks ago, we determined that it would be better um, for visibility and safety if that it would be changed to a plaque. Um, so it would be flat and flush and not obstruct anyone's view or be something that someone could run into with a bicycle or, you know, that. So that one um, was that this was for a neighbor who lived at this intersection. I think Lily Palmer was the, what was her name? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then uh, project number three is the radar speed signs to be installed. And we've got um, just somewhere between Kolb and Branner. Um, and the current price that we have for two radar speed signs is $45,000. So that's what we've put in on this one. So that's two signs? Two signs, yes. And is that that's forty five thousand each? No, for both. For two. For, okay, thanks. For two. Then uh, the next project is project number four, Casanova Ave. It's a sidewalk along the east side. I'm going to say east, but basically uh, between Toyon and Sequoia. Over here, um, there's a photo of it on the right. There is nothing there currently. Um, and then on the same uh, section, the same block of Casanova, um, someone has asked for a street light. And I had a little confusion trying to locate it, but this is my best guess of where they are looking to do it. Um, the other aspect on the application was for tree trimming. There are existing lights that are just enclosed in the trees, but that's kind of a maintenance thing. So we'll try and get someone out there to, to work on that. We'll put it on a, a list. So how much of that 20,000 is trimming versus street light? It's, that's all street light. So that's like the flat price we're going with right now, um, just to, to get the light, um, to get it installed, to work with PG&E to get them out there to get. The yes, well, that pole is there, but yes. That would be on an existing pole. Right. So it's a. That's gone from 5,000 last year. That's gone from 5,000 last year to 20. 2000 this year. Yes. And when, um, if this is a prioritized project, we'll dial this in better. But at this point, we're saying ballpark, it's, it's going to be for the staff time and um, just a lot of coordination. And by the time it's constructed, I don't know if everything is going to go up another 10% to by next year. So it's, it's a realistic estimate. Okay. Um, project number six was to be replace the neighborhood crime watch signs in Del Monte Grove, Laguna Grande. And that we had uh, just a $5,000 for, or I'm not sure how many signs this would be, but um, that should cover a number of signs that could be purchased and just put on the. Um, and I'm not even sure if neighborhood watch is even a thing these days. 
now that we have internet. Yes. Uh, project number seven at, at Laguna Grande Park. There's a project submitted for parking lot lighting um, over there. And they were talking, uh, we mentioned ballers a little while ago. This would be something like that. And the photos um, look pretty fantastic. But just to provide some lighting over there after dark. We had a price of about $70,000. That would depend a lot on which type was chosen. So um, as we get more information, we can dial that in as well. Project number eight was the signage for Laguna Grande Park. Um, people were wanting to post signs of what the rules for using the park were. Um, so we just guessed at $5,000 on that one, just for several signs. Project number nine, uh, Laguna Grande Court tot lot. There's a tot lot at the end of Laguna Grande Court, um, which is down kind of right at the end of the cul-de-sac here. Um, there's a tree that was um, has a root that's uplifted the concrete. So this is a project that can be um, funded under Measure P and S for the sidewalks. So. That's that one. So on the ones that can be, will you let us know if they're actually on the list? Yes. Okay. I mean, not tonight, but at some point. Yes. Uh, okay. And then um, project number 10 is Laguna Grande Park soccer field fencing. So this was to install some fencing to keep the soccer balls out of both um, the people's backyards on the right over here as well as in the from going into the lake. But one of the issues about um, the soccer field is that it's actually in the city of Seaside. So, um, it's so but issue. is the fence location in Monterey? No. So this is not a valid project then. We can't do things that aren't in the city of Monterey. So the orange line is the limit, the city limit, right? That is the city boundary, correct. So th this is not a valid project. Okay. So we will remove. Also, to really keep soccer balls out, you're talking about one heck of a high <laughs> fence. Yeah, we, we found something. <laughs> it was like a 14-foot, I think, nylon kind of, you know, like the, the netting you see at the yeah, baseball. Yeah, I mean, it, it's depending on where it is on the field. Yeah. Right. Right. But if it's not in the city of Monterey, we can't be doing it. I mean, I know I know that's been an issue in the past. And it, does that go for NIP or are we talking because Parks and Rec maintain the park, obviously, or the Parks Department? Yeah, I mean, we I thought to... we did the field for that. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. didn't we do some of the, I mean, the artificial turf there? Yeah, that was a, a so, very big NIP project. So how could we do the artificial turf if it's not in the city? I think you get it. You, you get an agreement. <laughs> That's just like biggie. <laughs> just like the work we do over in neighborhood graduate school. My belief is we approved it and did it before we figured out that the city boundary was where it is. <laughs> oh, that's right. No, that, sorry. It's, that's yeah, and and before we take it off, let's make sure what we can or can't do there. Yeah, I yes. believe we've got I permission mean, in other areas. I agree. Yeah, Na uh, Defense Language Institute, we did all of the ball fields. It's the same thing. You just get a an agreement. But, well, yeah, but it's, it's a little different with another city versus a military or the school district. I mean, but let, let's. I mean, we need to know how how yes. we were able to if we were if there was a way that was worked out that we were able to do the soccer field. The same thing could be worked out to do a fence. Yes. So we just we just need to know. So it needs to stay on until we know that for sure. Yeah, I and it, to, to add my comment that's gonna become a, an even bigger issue when the day comes when that turf needs to be replaced. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, the city's maintaining it now, but you know, oh, yeah. it's not gonna last forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you always have specific contracts with the city of doing and? Well, yeah, it would, yeah. the soccer fields up in DLI are bone of contention because that was before DLI got close to the public. <laughs> Right. And it used to be used all the time by, by you know, soccer leagues and all the rest. And then a little thing called 9-11 happened and everything changed. <clears throat> it changed it drastically. Yeah, but until we know 
what we can do, it, it, it yeah. should stay. Yes. Yeah. Moving on. Um, the project number 11 is Virgin Avenue. Um, is, there's an existing uh, decomposed granite path and the uh, project, this was a new project from this year. Um, the submitter asked if we could widen it um, so that it would be more easy for bicycles and pedestrians going along that. And it's the one block, it's between is that Montecito and Grant over there. And those are the projects in Del Monte Grove of Laguna Grande. Okay. Do you speak to any of them? Yeah, just you, my you don't have to, but I, up to you. Yeah, no, I'd like, I'd like to think. It, it's safety on Casanova Avenue. Is your mic on? Yeah, I'm, it's missing the little. Well, how am I? Good. Better. It's on. Okay. I'll, no, thanks. It, it's safety on Casanova Avenue that a lot of these, pro, several of these projects are, are all about. And we've fortunately done the traffic calming study and more, you know, hopefully we'll enlist support of the neighbors and we'll be submitting traffic circles, et cetera. Um, radar speed signs is an example. The sidewalk and the uh, street lights are both, the, the house at about 500 Casanova is where there was an accident and it's dark and there was also a horrible assault there. So that's that was the genesis of those. Um, parking lot lighting at Laguna Grande Park has been in the works for a long time. Again, that's a safety measure to prevent crime at, you know, during the, the nighttime hours. The tot lot repair, I've heard from the neighbor who lives adjacent to the park, that still needs to be done. Um, the soccer field fencing, we talked about. The, and, and the one submittal for this year, the Virgin Avenue path widening, I pass by there frequently on foot and there's really, there is no sidewalk there and the street is narrow. So I'm forced to compete with the traffic in that, in that block. That's it. Okay. Any Dennis? It appears the radar speed signs are somehow related to GM's problem and not being able to get chips because those things used to be fifteen thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> um, the lighting on seven on DMG seven couldn't that be solar and make that cheaper? If solar works at in the nighttime, I'd. I, I think we're open my house and they stay on all night. Okay, yeah, we're open to anything. And it would be a you know low low to the ground type lighting that wouldn't interfere with the wildlife, et cetera. Jamie. Um, on the DMV seven, I, I think that looks like there would be a great project and, and solar makes it doable. The question I would have is uh, neighborhood acceptance. Is this within a range of neighboring houses where we'd need to sign off, you know, the 300 foot or 100 foot or whatever, just to make sure. I don't want it, don't want people to be surprised. Yeah, th that could be. I do know that one, the neighbor who I've spoken to happens to live across the street. Yeah. It, it'd be good to get, you know, that yeah, and, get a okay. petition from the folks that they're okay with it because mm -hmm. nothing quite like the change in how something appears at night to, Mm -hmm. surprise people and sometimes good sometimes not great and there will be i'm expecting there will be uh, potentially environmental issues too with the lighting um at nighttime because of the look you know the lake right there um so that could be an issue as well and we'll find out when we go to planning yeah good almost issue there too mm -hmm. well i can i can it's see reasons for why for why to do lighting there no question about it it's mm -hmm. a, question yeah. Question, isn't there a master plan? There's a JPA that's the Park District, Seaside, and Monterey. <laughs> and there's a JPA that runs this whole thing, yes. both sides. So something, you know, that JPA needs to be involved in this, whoever. Okay. Yeah. Right, correct. And they've been holding regular meetings, fortunately. And the, there's a study that's currently in the works. And it's maybe we can piggyback on that. Mm -hmm. They have a master plan or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gone out to a, a landscape design consultant. 
they've done their first draft and we're ready for the final report. And then the wheels are turning, it is, which isn't you know, good news, but they turn any, slowly. <laughs> uh, any members of the committee at least have their hands up? Nope, no hands up and no hands up uh, in the public either. Okay, well, let's move on to downtown. Let me get there. Okay, downtown, we've got nine projects left. This is a, a neighborhood. There were a lot. Well, we went up to project number 25, but most of them have been removed from downtown and put back into citywide. I mean, community-wide. <laughs> Please excuse me. Um, again, we can, Cody kicks me every time I do that. Kick me. Um, you can see them on beginning on page 11 of the agenda report on the ones that are missing. But the first one again um, is the Monterey Bay Park, the restrooms again, um, as similar to Del Monte Beach, we're gonna be doing a study first to see where restrooms are warranted citywide. Okay, these are, is this the volleyball court restrooms or is this the restrooms at the wharf? This, um, I believe, is the volleyball court. The restaurant. oldest project in the history of NIP. Yes, 1999. Uh, somehow I have a feeling I don't see this committee wanting to have that turn into a study after we've been trying to get a restroom built there for 15 years, 10 years? 1999, 20, 23. Yeah. 22 years. Yeah. You can go on. At this point, they figured out whether we had over we had standing room only folks, a volleyball people, and all the rest of the need for a restroom there. Okay, <laughs> probably was. <laughs> yeah, I wish that were true. <laughs> all right, so we'll get a price on that one. Yeah, I mean it's it's what's <laughs> what's with the elevation too? That's a big prop member. All that. So now it was held up that. for every reason under the sun, excuse under the sun. We had to design the park first, yes. parks designed. We had to get plans approved for the for the Coastal Commission. They're approved. <laughs> and we were going to put it inside the kayak building. Now, there's one there. Yeah. Uh, it was like ever, you know. Probably one of the most used areas of, of a park without a restroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just going back to the list, then um, project number three, the Hartnell Gulch stream restoration project for the design of that project is complete. So that one uh, we can remove from the list. I've got um, project number five there as well. That's for actual restoration. So it's a construction, like actually doing the work of the project. It's related to the design uh, for number three. So I just wanted to point that out and we'll start walking through the neighborhoods. Hopefully Kurt is still on the line. So here's um, project number one is the Monterey Bay Park restrooms at the volleyball court. We will... Uh, look at getting a cost for this one. Project number two is the Lake El Estero, the Lake Edge Improvements. This is phase five of that project. Um, it was originally proposed in 2012 and um, permitting this project today um, is a challenge. Um, there are lots of issues now, the, the I think, from what I understand, the uh, Gabion baskets that were originally used are no longer supported by the uh, environmental, well, regional water board and um, environmental folks. So that the use of Gabion baskets um, is no longer in favor, shall we say. So um, there will be permitting hurdles um, on this. Uh, my understanding is that uh, the um, current, shoreline of the park has been stable for many years so um, this may not be a an immediate need project yeah, th this was always one that was submitted by the parks department so okay if they think it's not needed anymore just let us know okay <laughs> yeah let's say some bucks there 
Thank you. Yeah, this then, was not a thought up or created by general public. Okay. This was a parks, park submitted things historically, a parks division. The one thing um, also that I, I mentioned as I was going through preparing the slides for this, I was like, oh, this should have been a citywide project. So we will take it out of downtown. It was city, I um, keep saying that, community-wide project. It was um, placed in the downtown neighborhood because that's where it's located, but we will move this to the community-wide. It will be added to the end of the list, become community-wide project number 66. So we'll see it in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, project number three, this was the study for Hartnell Gulch, the stream restoration, um, which is complete. Project number four is uh, the Jack's Park entrance, the baseball statue relocation. There's the statue you can see in the top over here that we're going to put down on the ground somewhere. It's kind of um, like move a statue. Eight years. Project number five is the actual restoration. So it's beginning to uh, restore the stream um, from the design that was previously prepared. This will be the section between Pacific Street and Hartnell Street. And the uh, approximate cost of that one is $760,000. Uh, project 11. Um, is to add a shower station onto the outside of the existing restroom facility there at the end of uh, Wharf 2, the commercial wharf. Project 14 is uh, submitted in 2020, so this is a new one, but it's a Hartnell Street Webster Crosswalk to install the flashing beacons. Um, and the way I read the project was that it would be the crossing from the post office, which is on the left to the well, the opposite side of the street by the, the uh, hospital uh, facility. A hospital. Real bad corner. Yes, there's a lot going on. Yeah, good project. Uh, project number 16 is Church Street at Figueroa. It's crazed crosswalk. So the write-up for this also just said that um, San Carlos School is on the left side of the photo. Um, then, well, here's the school in the... Um, down here um, and the gym and the ball field are on the other side of the street so um, in the write-up for the project description said two to six times a day students are going back and forth on this crosswalk so they're asking for a raised crosswalk um, i think we were assuming that there would be some flashing beacons with that as well um, which is why the, the price for that one is a little bit I mean, higher than just thing things. raised. What are we yeah. talking about? Raised. So the idea of the table is what it is. Yes. Yes. Okay. So to be wide enough, but it would be basically six inches high and then, um, speed table. yes. <laughs> and what we're thinking is that, um, and one of the concerns of the project submitter too, is just that people drive the wrong way down church street. This is one way, the way we're looking at it. Um, and people just want a shortcut out to uh, Fremont. And so this would, we could put some kind of signage on the, the angled sure. part of the speed table. It's one way in. Yes, but people go the wrong way out oh. um, frequently I, from what I've heard. I, my office was across the street from that for a long time and I've never seen someone go the wrong way. Good, that's good. But, but it's just not, another that's where it never occurred, but I've never seen it. Another way to uh, just prevent that from happening. I um, mean, here's a new project that was submitted this year uh, Camino El Estero at Webster. This is a mid block crosswalk. Um, and they've asked for flashing beacons here. Um, as the traffic advisory reviewed this, they were thinking that we could probably do something with uh, the curb extensions, like coming in a little bit to make that a shorter crossing as well. But that was a good project that everyone is uh, interested in seeing built. <laughs> okay.
All right, Kurt, uh, do you want to address any of these? I know you're on your phone. Are you still there? Yep, I do. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, I think DT11, the Monterey Beach Shower Station, should be community project, not a downtown project. The Hartnell Crosswalk, it, it, the post office workers go across that all the time because their parking is down on Dormity Court. So that is highly trafficked while well, in the post office, it's highly trafficked area. And similarly with DT25, I go by there quite a bit. And I, if you have those campers and all the cars parked along El Estero, it is really, really hard to see somebody being across that crosswalk. So I, I think that's a, in my mind, a major issue. The other one, we mentioned the, the restrooms. The only thing I want to say about that is in 10 years, there's probably going to be a lot of water there, given the current sea level rise and the increasing sea level rise. A uh, little bit iffy if that park's going to be there. So keep that in mind. <laughs> unless we spend, unless the city is going to spend a whole lot of money building a new. Uh, Breakwater. Then on, let's see, there was one more. Oh, the, the raised crosswalks. I, I did talk to the principal today about that, and they are in favor. You know, the parents are, are concerned with the cars coming through there while the kids are trying to cross. Plus, they're building that new gymnasium right there across the street, so they're going to even have more traffic going from the school across church over to their new gymnasium. And so that's going to be a highly trafficked area. And then again, back to 25, that crosswalk there by Ellen Sterl, there's a lot of people that are in that business. There's a physical therapy, there's some dentists, and there's no parking in that area. So a lot of people have to park over on by the Ellen Sterl or use the Ellis Park and have to cut across that particular crosswalk to get to those businesses and doctors. And then, again, I'm in favor of doing the study in all of the restrooms before we actually start committing money to that. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the commission? Uh, Jamie and then Dennis? I would point out that the uh, traffic uh, has a study that documents where the water levels are going to be in the next 25 and 50 years. So we could easily check that. Dennis. Uh, DT5, the 760,000, is that um, reducing silting that's going through there? Because I see the stabilizing embankments, et cetera. And is it, or is it just planting or what's what else going on there? Kitchens. Kitchens. Sorry, um, just to restore, to remove the invasive species and try and get it more natural into a more natural state. Okay. Any other member of the commission have questions or comments? Any members of the commission? Have me, Go ahead. Yes, uh, I want to make a comment about the Bay Park restaurant. Go for it. Okay, uh, uh, you get 20 people and 20 people will design a different restroom. Uh, what I want to bring up is the major cost of a restroom, especially a concrete one, is over a million dollars. Uh, that's the reason we came up with the Portland Loo because it addressed two major issues. Maintenance, which is the most expensive portion of a restroom. And the second is crime prevention. Portland Lou does both. Before, if we're not going through the study to put that restroom in, I would like to get a report at the next meeting on how our present Portland Lou compares on maintenance and crime prevention. It's been at Seminole Plaza for over 10 years, 
So we have a good baseline to learn from maintenance if which one we should be putting in there. And the other point that Kurt brought up is rising sea levels. With the Portland Lou, you shut off the water, you put a crane on the top, you lift the thing up and you take it somewhere else. <laughs> but with a concrete one, you just you just wasted a million bucks and you're gonna to have to demolish it. So uh, on that basis, I'd like to get some answers. And I've been asking for 10 years, what is the difference? The police can see how many people are in a Portland Loo. They can't do that in a concrete one. And if a woman goes in alone to a concrete restroom, she can be followed in. Portland Loo holds one and the door locks. So I'd like to get those questions answered so that we don't charge forth, spend a million dollars and then have to uh, destroy the thing. So uh, anyway, uh, before we go on, if it's not part of the study, then I want to get the report on the difference of the maintenance and crime. OK. Any other members of the commission have their hands up? Well, let's any member of the public. Yep. OK. We'll move on to uh, fish fish flats. And, and my thought is we do fish flats in Glenwood, then we'll take a five minute break before we dive into the two marathons. <laughs> and everyone's agreeable to that. Yes. Uh, Fisherman's Flats, um, the traffic calming plan is project number one. This is an active project um that that we started getting through there's some questions still that need to be resolved on this one but um that is um an active project that's on the list here it, the funding is out um one of the things that work well I'm like So what, I'll what discuss it. I'll so discuss do it. Do we have to fund it or don't like, we have to? Fund yeah, it? we do. We need more funding for it. Okay, so it's short. So it's short. But um, let me discuss it. The other one, uh, Fish Flats, project number four is the Via Isola radar speed signs. And those have been installed for a couple of years at least. So that one can come off the list. So now, anticipating Dennis's comment ahead of time. Uh, if we had contingency, if this is a cost overrun of an existing project, money could come out of a contingency. Yes. And one of the, well, there, no, but one of the things that we had asked was, was to have the finance committee or whatever name that city prefers to call it, meet to determine what is needed contingency wise for those projects that did not get defunded to make sure that they can be completed. Yes. So this yeah. case, this I guess until we do that, this one technically needs to be here for more. I I think the ten thousand is too high to fix it. I think we can do it for a heck of a lot less. Okay. Ten will cover it Basically, for sure. It went to the city council without after we had three neighborhood meetings, it was never presented and they tabled it. The city council hmm. tabled it. So there needs to be corrections made and then printed. That's all that needs to be done. And the correction is delete, deleting something that was stuck in by the consultant without the approval of the neighborhood. Okay. So that's where we're at. Okay. Dennis. So I was uh, heartened to learn that we have 850000 in the ending balance, which is not allocated yet to contingency, which kind of raised my heart a little bit because the 819000 that was previously approved for contingency didn't disappear effectively it's an ending balance so once we get to its appropriation we, we can have that money to do those things with and potentially fund this project to finish it off since unlike the other project where i asked contingency this one's not closed mm -hmm. that's correct there are there are actually three active projects on the list here tonight and it's going to be the same situation for all three where they can be um once Dennis is absolutely correct. The, the contingency fund is zero right now, but the ending balance fund is over $800,000. So we can 
allocate money. Well, city council can allocate money well, funding toward that. And historically, then, what we would have done is when there was an overrun, it would be brought here and then we would debate it and vote on whether to use contingency or ending balance. So, and again, it's a recommendation to the council to do it. So I, I guess technically we can't, we, I would request that at our next meeting, we have those agendized to review the overruns and see about recommending ending balance be used to do it as we have historically done. And it has to be agendized so that we can kind of yeah, do that. Because until it's agendized, we can't Correct. do it. Good. Okay. Any other members or or Tom? Or you actually you haven't finished Fish Flash yet. There was one new project which was uh, Tom, let's have uh, Tom, let's have the other Tom finish. Oh. And then I'll come nope. to I just realized we, we kind of interrupted in the middle of it. And many Tom. We didn't finish going through. And there are too many Toms in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, project number two, Via Casoli, sewer odor prevention. This was from 2015. Um, I, the, we, when Tom and I met um, with Marilyn a couple of weeks ago to discuss the projects, we're not sure whether this is still an active concern. Um, it, it may have been resolved, so we're going to do some research and do that, uh, get that resolved. Um, project number three is on Via Maritimo. Street light kind of, it's not a really good photo, but there's a, an existing um, utility pole at the end of the cul-de-sac here. Um, the proposal is to add a street light on that. Um, Next project would be the Via Sola Jocelyn Canyon, the entry walls rehabilitation, uh, which was approved in 2018. Uh, we had $15,000 allocated toward that. That seems really high. Yep. I, and it I may be the guy three years ago. Of course, the longer it goes, the more it's going to cost. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to talk about what exactly is, yeah. is needed for that one. Basically, uh, I guess there's some kind of material that coats it and that's essentially it needs to be sanded a little bit and recoated and that's it I okay mean, fifteen thousand is really high okay good we covered it though but the guy i talked to i don't think works for the city anymore okay so i don't know what happened to his notes <laughs> right. um and then the last prods oh no there's a couple more um project number six is fisherman's flats park uh tree replacement and I, I believe um, there was a large tree that was taken down or, or it's Real not huge, there. Huge oak, huge oak. Guy. That's gone. But then one had been replanted, but we're still wanting to make sure that uh, maybe another one would be put in its place. Um, and then project number seven would be a um, like a cul-de-sac or a, to create a turnaround for vehicles. Um, who are coming up from San Vito Circle. This is on VA Sola. Um, the issue with this one, there's a couple issues, but well, um, one of them is that... Is uh, and I just met with the superintendent of the school district this morning. And the school next year will become a digital academy, which means there will be very little traffic. There's like six instructors and people, uh, some of the parents will be going up maybe once a week. And then after that, the housing will be completed on Garden Road, 180 units of housing. And it's not known at this point how many kids from those units, four different projects on Garden Road will be going and where they'll be going to school. There might be none, there might be 40, there might be 50. It's okay because these aren't rented. So basically what happens at the school affects um, FF2 and this turnaround. Because right now you just have a driveway that ends at a fence that they close up at night. And basically, um, talking to the superintendent, that really isn't needed for well, the projection for the school, which okay. will close in June. Okay. Well, what were the, I'm assuming you had construction related issues or things you were going to 
Yes. So one of the issues um, you can see maybe on the screen in front of you um, is that the gold line again is the city boundary. So the city goes, the school is actually within the city limits, but only half of the cul-de-sac would fit in there. So if you look at the photo down below on the right-hand side of the street, well, we'd have to work. Um, there's existing utilities there. You can see the um, utility poles that would have to be relocated. Um, there, there are issues um, with this one as well. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense to spend any more time okay. on this project. So can we, should we? Well, read? who submitted the project? Uh, the neighbor lady that lives on the- She's the one who would have to. Okay. Yeah take it off. I've not talked to her about it. So yeah. I'll have to talk to her about it. Okay. Because she doesn't know what's going to happen to school. We just found out this morning. And it's kind of been a state of flux. Yeah. I mean, if she withdraws it, then it can be withdrawn. Yeah. If not, it's a project that can be yeah. done. Whether it makes sense, that's a whole different discussion. Don't, don't spend any more money on it till I get back. Yeah, we haven't. <laughs> okay. um, so those any, are the, the fisherman flats projects. Any other input or any okay. Any other member of the commission wishing to speak to any other questions on any of the fish fats projects? Yes. Have Richard hands raised, hand raised. Who does? Richard. Richard, go ahead. Yes, I have a question for Tom. Uh, I sponsored two projects for replacement of landmark trees. We had a $100,000 budget and there was $10,000 to replace landmark trees in Kona. Were those defunded, Tom? Are they still active? Great question. I'm looking at Cody because I'm unfamiliar with the project, Richard. Okay. So um, we'll have to, I will uh, follow up with you and find out where they were and uh, we'll do some research before the next meeting. They were approved, but I don't know if they were defunded, but it, if there's landmark trees that are missing in fish flats, they would be candidate for this uh, project. Thank you. Dennis, did you, okay. Oh. Any other member of the commission with a hand up or question? Any member of the public? Okay, uh, let's move on to Glenwood Circle. Glenwood Circle um, had two projects nominated. Um, they were, they're both complete. They're for the flashing beacons, <laughs> so. Way to go, Lee, that's the way to get her up. That's it. They were done two years ago. Yes. And my other two projects were moved from, um, into a citywide project. Correct, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, there were okay. two for the old capital site. Right. That was that was a quick yeah. neighborhood to yes. go through. I guess I still need to, my favorite. any member, Commission, have any questions or comments? Any member of the public? Okay, let's take a quick five minutes, no more than five minutes break, and then we will do, do Monterey Vista and New Monterey and get home in 10 minutes. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> right.
bring the meeting back to order. So everyone who's watching at home, you need to wake up now. <laughs> uh, Monterey Vista. All right. Monterey Vista, we had 11, uh, we have 22 projects that were submitted this year in Monterey Vista. Um, the first three, um, the entry medians, um, Monterey Vista, the Colton School stormwater drainage improvements, and Soledad Drive, the entry median uh, have been completed or can be pulled. Monterey Vista project number seven was for street markings. Um, funding is available for that project through the gas tax, so it does not have to be funded through NCIP. Um, the Mar Vista reconstruction project has a bunch of different um, pieces. This is an active project as well that's um, underfunded. Or so that would be one of the one of the three. Three. Yeah, okay. this is number two, um, and this also there. So we have um, project number six is for the design. Project number thirteen, that's kind of in a light blue color, um, is for phase one of construction to implement uh, the improvements to Mar Vista at Toda Vista. And then project number 19 is to, um, it's phase two, which would be the intersection at Mar Vista and Via Cayuba. So these are all of the projects that are in Monterey Vista. They don't fit on one screen. I apologize for that, but we'll get through them. Question for you. So you're saying number 13, that's a different color on the screen than the others? Yeah, I was trying to come up with different ways that wasn't too confusing. I, as a colorblind person? It doesn't help. And uh, ADA now applies to that as well. I'd like our men, our things in our reports to be ADA compliant. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll change it back I, the way. Yeah. I, the red in the report and some of these. So if you're going to do it, make it very different. Got it. Okay. I was trying That's to keep, be request. subtle about it because there's really not any difference, but it helped me uh, realize when like a project is related to another one. No, so, I, I, more part of it, just make it. Bold. Boldly different. Got it. Yes. Wouldn't that be better with footnote characters? Yes, I could do that too. Okay. I'm trying to like keep it lightning. Bolts. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm just, it's, 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 I could do maybe animated something or other. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's I um, thought that was a good point. To, I was going to bring it up earlier with the red printing on one of the things. That, sorry about that. Oh, it's red. Okay. Um, the, and then just the other ones that are connected, uh, Monterey Vista project number 10, uh, San Bernabe Drive. We have the design for that is uh, project number 10. And then construction for that is project number 18. So there's, there's. It so, just so makes, I guess we would have to fund 10 before we fund 18. Yes. Well, yes. Or, or all. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, in the scheme of things, funded. yeah, we would need to fund 10 before we do 18 or do both of them. Yeah, right. I'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, just quickly, project number four, and a lot of these, again, well, the first three are completed or, or no longer needed. Um, project number four is for um, freeway entrance signage. And I believe this is one, like the upper right photo, this is um, on Munras as you're going south. So this is where if you have to get on Highway 1 North, you turn left. If you go south toward Carmel, you go straight. But there is no uh, indication of that for the, on the signage. So I believe that's what this one is for. This is an old project from 2012. I, that I has thought never it been was done. for more areas than just there. If I remember right, it was kind of like wayfinding signage for tourists to get them out of town. But... That would definitely be one of the locations. Yes, yeah. And there's the other location that was listed was on uh, Soledad. And on the bottom photo, you can kind of see above that blue car, there's, well, above the car on the right, there's a, a rectangular sign. It's green, if you can see it. Um, that just says the Highway 1 southbound, turn right. If you're going straight, um, you'll end up on northbound. So 
from that direction, it's covered. It's coming up Munras, it's not. That's what that means. Uh, project number five at Via Del Rey and Hermon um, is the intersection. This was a project that was completed a number of years ago. The last piece that is not complete is the street light has not been powered up. So um, we're, we've been trying to contact pg e to get out to uh, energize the street light on that one. So it's 20 grand is then to do what? Contact pg e That's um, like our standard number at this point okay. for what it would- More than likely gonna change. Yes, it'll be less than that. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty confident. Hangs in the air. Um, Mar Vista project number six, this is an active project um, uh, that could be properly funded. It's on the list, but um, we'll look at that. If it needs additional funding, we'll, we can put this in next meeting um, with the other projects that are active and need a little additional funding. Project number eight was for street name signs. So my understanding in reading it was just that it's the, the green signs at the corner. The one they specifically mentioned being in need of repair in 2017 was um, Soledad at Monta Vista Street or Drive, which is the photo on the right. So it's it's been replaced. Um, and then going up uh, Monta Vista, is one of the older signs. This was a photo from 2015 from Google Street View, but um, that's what they're talking about. So this has been partially completed since 2017. So we'd have to go through and figure out um, which signs were uh, re remaining to be uh, replaced. Um, project number nine is a storm drain repair at uh, El Camanito del Sur. Um, the repair in front of um, this project, the photo on the right, it's like one property it comes down the road street on the upper left there's um, Del Norte. And there's a culvert that goes under the street. And apparently um, the work has been done, the, the drainage channel or whatever has been there has been improved and it's working pretty well according to uh, Juan's and Jean and the, the property owner has not, but there's a question about um, some additional work needed at the uphill side. So like on the farther side of um, Camanito del Norte over there. So we left this on and um, called it at, it will not come in at $15,000 if it's just to clean out a storm drain. Project number 10 is the San Bernabe Drive, the road and walkway design. Uh, we had $35,000 in for the design of this. Uh, we have been working with Whitson engineers um, and I, I know the, the design is close to being complete if it's not already complete. So um, this would cover what's remaining for the design piece of that project. Um, this uh, project number 11 is a street light um, that was approved in 2019. Um, again, I believe it's on the existing pole that's in the photo on the right-hand side there. You can kind of see it peeking up through the top of the tree. Um, this would just be to install and energize that street light. Project number 12 was another project approved in 2019. Um, it's hard to see from this photo, but there's a, over here on the, the lower side of the street is a really old, it's kind of the cast iron um, grate that doesn't collect a lot of water. And so the, uh, I believe it's the person who lives right next to that asked if we could change it to on the other side of the street is a like reticulated grate, which is much more open. So they're just really looking to have the, the top change, the grate changed. Um, so we will take a look at that project, but that's a, a valid project. Uh, project number 13 is uh, the first phase of construction for the Mar Vista Drive traffic calming plan. That would be redoing the intersection of Mar Vista at Tota Vista. And the uh, preliminary cost that came in for that was $760,000.
to do that one. At uh, project number 14 at Via Paraiso Park, it's a basketball court upgrade. You can see the courts. I remember Jeff Krebs um, discussing this one before he left. Um, but this is the issue with this one he mentioned. It was just getting access down to the courts over there because it's far from the, the parking lot in the street. So that came in at 130,000. Project number 15, um, Sierra Vista Drive, Sierra Vista Place, and Sierra Vista Terrace. Um, they're requesting a couple of different things. This was proposed in 2020. They are asking for some drainage um, improvements, which I believe are like swales along the side of the street to be, let's say, renewed or um, just cleaned out. That's one piece of it. Um, the other piece was, was talking about striping. Um, so the, the issue, that would be a trickier discussion only because the uh, the roads are very narrow and if we put a center line stripe down the middle of it then it's uh, potentially eliminating the parking on either side of the street so we'd have to take a look at that one a little more closely uh, project number 16 back at via Paraiso park this was proposed in 2020 it's a uh, expression swings so this is like a swing type of swing where two people can swing facing each other. And it would just be to install that swing at uh, Via Paraiso. Uh, project number 17 is Soledad Drive, submitted in 2020. There were a number of things that were requested. And um, as we met with the, the neighborhood reps on this one, um, if we can um, get the nominator the person who submitted the project to agree to only putting a radar speed sign in there we can do that um, if it's the other things um, they should be included in the traffic calming plan if there is one there were there was just a lot of um, suggestions that were thrown out in the description of this project uh, project number 18 is san burnaby drive the road reconstruction and um, installing a walkway. Um, this would be phase one, um, but the cost of that would be $1.3 million to construct. It's on a steep slope. The road would have to be widened and there'd be a lot of um, work required to make that possible. Project number 19 is phase two of the Mar Vista Drive traffic calming plan, which is improving the intersection of Mar Vista at Via Gayuba. And we have a preliminary cost on that of $580,000. Project 21 at uh, back at Via Paraiso Park. This is tennis court striping. There are a number of issues um, so I went to the Parks and Rec Committee meeting last week, um, and there's an agreement apparently between the pickleball folks and the tennis players over there that's being implemented right now. So um, there's a three month trial period that's beginning May 1st, I believe, or, what, uh, April, or it, it's beginning shortly. And they're gonna try and um, use one court for pickleball and one court uh, exclusively for tennis. So they're gonna try and separate that, see how it works. And after three months, um, to see if there's any conclusions that can be drawn from that, how that worked. Um, so That's my mic is off. who's been heading up those peace talks? Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't need to Project number 22 was submitted this year as for that uh, they're asking really for a crosswalk so people can walk from uh, the Monterey Vista neighborhood across Pacific and over to the mall was mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so the issue with this is just the speed and what it would really take. Uh, we brought this to the traffic advisory committee uh, who said that, whoa, dude, that it would take a study to see if there's a, a spot that could be that where the crosswalk could be located safely. 
Um, it'll probably be flashing beacons and um, the, it just really comes down to whether there's a location for um, a safe crossing. So there, there are a number of issues with this one. I think the, the range of um, costs we had on this one, the 45,000 would be for a study to determine whether, whether there was a suitable location for a crossing. And then the 90 would be if we found one and we could install the crossing with the flashing beacons. And those are the projects in Monterey Vista. Uh, have fun. Okay. Well, Gene and I worked hard on this and tried to trim this list down. So first of all, number one and number three were both entrance things that we, since we have built the nice Monterey Vista entrance signs, um, that was kind of came out of those. That's why we're both uh, pulling uh, MV1 and MV3 are totally being pulled and we can ex exit them out. Um, the same with M uh, MV2, that was uh, according to Tom, that all work has been done, that drainage work. So MV2 is, as he said, has been pulled. Um, MV MV4 was a, project which was the freeway entrance signs was a project that was put in by uh, by Tom Reeves and long time ago when he was city engineer and he now says um, I don't care about that you know I did that when I was working for the city now I'm no longer I know where I'm going I don't need the sign so it's really up to he's leaving it up to Renee or um, to sorry to Andrea the traffic engineer if she wants to put her name on it, but he's uh, he's out of it. <laughs> so I don't know whether Andrea wants to take over that project. If not, we can X that one out as well. Um, MV5 um, has been the uh, Herman Drive right turn lane. As we said, as he, Tom said, that's been done. The homeowner there or the submitter is very happy with what's happened there and what its effect on it. So they're very pleased. They wanna thank the whole committee here. Um, we thought uh, since that light only needs to be, you know, it, uh, basically the city needs to kick PG and E, we thought it might be make sense to combine that with the street light that is up on, that's up on Herman, which is, uh, sorry, on Del Norte, which is MV11 which is also only a, a project to, to put a street light up there to, that we could, if possible, we could just combine those two projects because they're only kicking pg and &E. And if you're gonna call them anyway, make it one project and kick them for both those sites. They're close together, two street lights. One has to be wired, one, they gotta just put an arm on a pole. And, and uh, if possible, we can just move cancel this uh, MV5 and move it in together with uh, MV11, which is the Del, uh, Del Norte street sign. All in trying to trim projects here. <laughs> so the next one is MV6, which is the Mar Vista reconstruction. This is the active project. Most of this, as far as I know, has been designed and uh, I've seen drawings of those whole intersections. I don't know how many more details there need to be, but our recommendation was that we actually cancel this project and the little design work that's left on the two inter there's two expensive uh, inter um, reconstruction projects that we just combine that are MV 13 and 19 that we just combine the remaining designing work in with those projects. And uh, that way we can get this project off the list as well. Does that make sense? There is uh, some portion of design that still needs to be done. So the design of it is not complete yet. And we're looking at potentially having it be out of ending balance. So yeah. it wouldn't be on the list. So oh, okay. Well, I I'm, might that's just, just see that. That's but, fine. Sounds very reasonable, yeah. If I could add one more thing. Um, so it was MV6. So that's kind of been wrapped into a traffic calming plan for, Monterey, for Mar Vista, that street. So there's additional intersections in design 
that if you'd want to pursue them in the future, we need to wrap up this uh, traffic calming plan and get that adopted. Okay, yeah, that's true then. But aren't those, those intersections were in the original traffic calming plan already in there. They were, they had medians there rather than, um, rather than, so does that not work? I mean, we, it, that intersection, those intersections have already been approved to make alterations on, it, but because they had medians rather than the more modern lane narrowing, I, you know, concept. You, you're correct with the two, uh, the other two um, recommended projects or submitted projects. There is an additional, additional one at Marvis and Toyon that's in this current yeah. uh, traffic calming plan. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yeah, MV7 was basically leave as is. Those who are, we, um, I think a, a, f a fair number of those streets have been done. A lot of them is uh, not, is, uh, is I think not doable because roads are too narrow. So um, I don't know how many of what's been recommended has been done, but when I see, I think a fair number of them have been done. Uh, Via Del Rey has been done and a bunch of other, I think Lower Herman has been done. So I'm not sure how much there's left of what of Green what Tom. is to be done, what can Green be done. Tom is done. Pardon me? That was one of the ones you said was pulled because it's done. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Was not, I'm not okay. That's right. He did say that. Yeah. That was my other list over here. Yeah. Um, okay. MV8. Um, yep. And we talked about that. And nine. Um, basically, yeah, MV9 was the storm drain outlet and that has been done i think the um i the, the people who submitted it have moved the people who are now in the house um they say they they're what we had talked about what wasn't done was kind of was the intake to that pipe that wasn't in the original project people that are in the house say we'll keep that clean it's not really worth a project so i think we can pull if i can't contact the original submitter anymore, but I think the people who live in the house are, are totally happy with it as is. So my recommendation would be just to pull MB9. Um, uh, MB10 is also, as far as I know, that's the design project for the San Bernabe Drive. That's, there's a lot of support for that. That's that, to do it is quite expensive. The 1.3 was that, my question is, is that only because we had made that project into two phases. Was that both the road widening and the sidewalk for the 1.3 million or was that only for the road widening, which was gonna be phase one and phase two was gonna be this, the sidewalk? Uh, how that project was phased was phase one was the sidewalk portion. Oh, okay. Phase one was that, that would actually be preferable, but I think, well, when we talked last, well, when we talked to Jeff Krebs, we were gonna do phase one was gonna be the road, phase two was gonna be the sidewalk because that driveway is so difficult to deal with. Um, but uh, this, the, I know the submitter would, would, would really like to have the sidewalk done first. Either it would be the decision of our consultants, what they feel would be the more pressing matter. Um, and then I guess we would defer to neighborhood okay. uh, preference for that yeah well then the the residents would prefer but i thought from what jeff krebs from our conversation with jeff krebs he was saying it'd be easier to do the road first but if it's a sidewalk first that's great too according to the description we have here the, the phase one's the widening the widening phase two in future would be the sidewalk yeah, that's the way Jeff Krebs had it. And 1.3 million makes sense for having to widen the street and all the rest. Yeah. So, but what I wanted to say was MB10 is actually the um, the redesign. And I don't know, is there, um, does it make sense? Do we have, should we put the rest of the design in phase one and make it one project? Or is it, it I mean, since most of the design I think has been done, does it make sense to keep this project, 
keep the design project going. We had thought we'd um, we'd cancel that we'd cancel this design project just to reduce the number of projects and put that design in with the the build. You know, unless the cost is so high that we need to phase phase that. I think the design of the, you know, the the design itself is not a cost wise a big piece of the the project. Um, I am unfamiliar right now. I, I think we're at like sixty or even maybe even higher percent complete. So we're very close to completing the design. Um, if you wanted to lump it in with the, the first phase, um, yeah, we could do that. I mean, there's no reason not to. I don't, it, it, Are you, huh? I, I don't know. Uh, 1.3. Yeah. 1.3 is pretty high. Yeah. Because yeah, until you got a design, it's guessing on the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, that's true. Okay, let's keep it. So I'd, we'll keep them separate. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reality is, if we have three or four million dollars getting a one point three million yeah. project, no, that's one, true. One SWAT is not going to happen. <laughs> but I, well, we might have to do it in three phase. I don't know how we do it in yeah. three phases. <laughs> having a firm design first will allow yeah. you to see what you can do. Yeah, yeah, and it's that's the wall drops on Windermere with, uh, with the four phases. To get the cost factors are too. Okay. Okay. So MV eleven was the El Caminito Street sign. That was the highest voted project of any of our projects. That was on was number one on your list. <laughs> from um, had the highest number of votes, other than the than fuel reduction. Mm -hmm. But if that's if we put the other street light in with this one, then that this one just becomes both the the uh, uh, just kicking PG E to get their work done. Um, MV12, I think we discussed pretty well. MV13 uh, is the uh, construction cost, uh, is the first of the construction costs that had been approved. And um, if, we, if, if we leave it as is, then it won't have the, the completed design, we'll leave the design for potentially leftovers. So on that one, Hans? Yes. The, so that's just a, a chunk of money to start building some of the things. That, as far as I know, is is the that's the project okay. that we had a, already approved to actually build that intersection, to build all the bulb outs, the parking. Okay. You, you might just, since it's at 760K, yeah. you might want to just get with Tom and see what exactly you're getting for the 760. If you can make that number smaller, it might be wise. Okay. But, that, but that, again, that's your call. It's your... Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, we can talk about that. But I think that was we talked about it with Jeff Krebs way back when, and it was designed quite, I think, quite nicely. So, but we can, yeah. Yeah, no, I realize 760s are <laughs> tough to. It's going to be a lift. Yeah. Um, well, I think a lot of it will depend upon when we go out to our neighborhood and do a priority yeah. prioritization and yeah. it may not come up that high I'm, I'm just saying if there's a way to yep you know, take a piece of it out to another phase it might be worth looking at yeah okay and then um yeah mv 13 was this was this same and let's see mv 14 was basically that was the basketball court. We that's Parks and Rec that, um, as far as I know, stays in. Um, MV15. That was the very complicated Sierra Vista project, and I think uh, Jane Sink, who submitted this, uh, wants to reduce this to just the drainage to make it a little more sense and not not uh, confuse it with all the lines and needing traffic studies and then no parking zones and so forth. So if we just reduce that to the drainage work. So um, basically the drainage stays on Cielo Vista. She's worried about Cielo Vista place that water, a lot of the water that comes down the street right now runs down Sierra Vista place. And that the idea is to avoid that because there's only one really small drain on that end of that cul-de-sac that totally floods and floods into people's houses because that's a real steep that all goes down and 
furthermore, it goes down on Sierra Vista, which is also a, already a problem down there, mm -hmm. drainage wise. So to get that repaired. Um, so that can be reduced to just the drainage. Um, the uh, MV16, the swings, you were going to talk to the submitter because they had submitted, I believe, swings in several different parks. Yes. And whether the, I think our idea was whether it makes sense to combine those into a single project or leave them as separate parks. Yes. There's another one uh, for Dennis the Menace Park that uh, was nominated. So that will be in the citywide when we meet in two weeks and we can put them together. But the question was for her, does it make sense to combine the two into a single project or you haven't talked with her or what? Um, I did not ask her, okay. so we can do that. Yeah, that was from, okay. Okay, so MB17 is a sold at traffic calming. And I talked to the submitter there and they realized that to do a whole traffic study would be quite hard. And they're, uh, they don't feel like the radar speed signs is gonna do a lot um on that street because cars race through there so what they would like to do is is to refocus that project that to do an inf a sidewalk infill basically between um uh, there's a, a nice a, a nice sidewalk down all of sold at except from via descanso to via encina on that side on the downhill side of the street and just adding that a sidewalk on that side of the street and he will look into making sure all the residents uh, that are whose houses will that'll go in front he will get signatures from all them he thinks that's well supported that that would if you go to google earth or zoom in on that there's no sidewalk on that mm -hmm. side of the street and but there is on on both sides and that would be a really he thinks that would be, in, and he's, I think, right, that would be a really good fill-in project to kind of change the focus of that, to make that street safer for pedestrians. Okay. Pardon me? Yes. Well, it's a, uh, I get yeah, but he now has a, a just a, to to build that one little sidewalk would be um, with with that <clears throat> he doesn't have the streets in there, but between it, yeah it, between Wisconsin and Encino, the shoes of the homeowners because not everyone wants a sidewalk in front. Yep, of us. and he's talked to he hasn't talked to everybody, but he's talked to <laughs> several of them who have no problem with that. They need to they need yeah. to, they need to realize they will then be responsible for maintaining. We talked about that. <laughs> okay, and yeah, MV18 basically leave as is, um, or we'll discuss it. That's the the build part of the Santa Ber San Bernabe, the um, really affordable build build project, <laughs> and um, Mar Vista Phase Two will probably. Um, that was the building, the one at top of uh, Via Gayuba. And that'll probably be another year before we even get there. Uh, we're trying to on, on a Mar Vista, the goal is to go from the top, go down and do intersect, do all the intersections one, one by one. Um, the Pacific Street adaptive um, sign was uh, probably suggested by the city although got moved dennis to, duke's name is on there i, think, I believe it got moved to city why yes okay mb20 guy that's right that got okay but i don't know that's we'll up to dennis that. whether he wants we'll talk about, we'll talk about it <laughs> okay um mv21 is again is uh um is the restriping and i think our um Peter Charles, who submitted it, no longer plays tennis, uh, but he's passing it on. Pickleball. What's Is he playing pickleball? Then? No, he oh. plays tennis. He wanted to restripe oh, initially to tennis. So the goal is the goal of the pickleball court was that there was club play going on there where 
three times a week, there'd be 50 to 60 people playing there. That was quite rowdy and noisy for the neighborhood. So the city actually paid for arbitration between um, <laughs> residents and, uh, and um, the uh, club. And what came out of that is to basically uh, what it was agreed upon or to have to try anyway, to have one, one be purely used for tennis, only one court, one tennis court be made into two or to be used for now, no changes now to be used as two pickleball courts, that if only two pickleball courts can be used at one time that the club, there would be significantly less club play and regular noise. The pickleball club agreed to it because that way they would get a permanent pickleball site. And since we now have a lot of pickleball players and a lot of tennis players, so this will be tried out for three months and if people will receive comments and then the city will decide whether to make that permanent or not. And if that is made permanent, this would pay for restriping of the line of the court to be permanent. And then I believe the last part, MV22, Pacific Street traffic calming. Um, I talked with Wendy, the submitter, and she's going to pull that project for this year because she's we're going to talk with a traffic engineer next year and really come up with a more viable thought out plan for for next year. So MV22 will be pulled as well. Okay. So we've pulled, I think, quite a few projects and tried to reduce that list. Much appreciated. Uh, any of course. <laughs> <laughs> I just look right at the beginning. It, <laughs> Actually, I should see. Does anyone have his hands up from the no? <laughs> well, so, we have Richard's hand up. Yeah. And Richard, you'll be after Dennis. So the design part of it that has the remainder of thirty five thousand for the whole thing I'm or sorry, whatever. The design of, which, which one? of of the San Bernabe. San, San Bernabe, yeah. Um that's effectively an open project that needs some completion work. So that's yes. an, that's our third contingency opportunity or funding ending balance. Uh, no, that was design of Mar Vista. Correct. Okay. Mar Vista is still an active project. Okay. Um, design of Mar Vista. Right. Was, was San Bernabe's a new one? It was pulled. So it was one of the ones that was defunded in 2020. It was mostly designed, but still has Correct. work to be designed. And I think for... It was one of the infinite lot in logic of defunding projects that were like 75 or 80 percent done okay that so sense. i think but because of the high price of the construction of even phase one and uh but the 1.3 now i'm not totally understand was that for then doing phase one as doing the sidewalk or phase one of doing the street widening according to our paper here phase one is street, street widening, widening. So if you could confirm yeah, what we'll the 1.3 is for future meetings, that'd be great. According to the paperwork, phase one is yeah, that's right. That's what winding. we thought. So and 1.3 million makes sense for street winding for sidewalks. It seems well, there's a lot of retaining walls and fit oh, and fill for side for, for. I don't even know how you're going to do it, but so I see between. Okay, I see between the three projects, 13, 18, and 19, 2.64 million. Um, is any of that funded by Measure P, S, X, Y, Z, whatever? That's a good question. Measure P funds a replacement of pavement, so it would not fund any of mm. these because yeah. there's uh, like geometry changes. So it would be we're um, doing curb bulb outs and we're improving the intersection. Measure P is intended just to fix what's there not change anything can we draw so, lines about what's there because a lot of that roadway needs some lot of help and it's just the ball about section that's the change for traffic coming but the road bed itself is in i guess the change. question is if you're doing bulb outs and things there you still have to put the street in in between the bulb right. outs and yes. things Correct. so you might check to see if some of it could be funded by measure p no the entire project couldn't be no but, but some of it's going to involve rebuilding a street throughout. Yes. And we could take a look at 
I, I just uh, I, what I'm I, thinking I, of is they, the grading and how that's going to work. And um, I, I don't know, may, may or may not be, but I think it's worth looking yes, as they are a really big project. Yeah, they're really big projects, and it was sold to the citizens that those measures to add to the sales tax was to fix those streets. Mm -hmm. And some of that roadbed I would drive on every day is alligatored and coming apart. Uh, in front of the mayor's house, the thing is alligatored and coming apart. It's like, and you might look at it the other way. You'd hate to send, have the measure do the improvement, have it all torn apart, have all the traffic control, and not do the rest of what's desired. <laughs> Look and see. And Richard, I think has his hand up. Yeah, uh, just a comment. I'm using the summary page to keep track, and I've got notes all over it. Can we get an updated summary page before the next meeting? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Anyone else have their hands up, Felicia? Yes, you have some members of the pub, members of the public, excuse me. The first is Clementine. Go ahead, Clementine. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I'm squeezing this in with bedtime, so I appreciate the Zoom opportunity. And I did hear there were there was a question that was asked about my expression swing project. So I don't know if this is a chance that I could explain. My goal was to have that kind of swing at you know, more than one park if possible. I've had friends who've visited other towns where they have those swings and just said what a blast it was to, for the parent to be able to face their kid and sort of eye level. And um, I, I also read some convincing things about how wonderful that can be for children with disabilities. Um, so I'm not sure what the goal would be to split the two projects, if that works better with your system, but I still, my goal would be to get these in multiple parks if possible. So thank you for consideration. Thank you. And Tom, you might just reach out there and let her know the pros and cons of it as one or versus two yes. projects. Yep. Thank you, Clementine. Alicia, there another member of the public? Yep, I have John Sovereign. Go ahead, John. Good evening. I just wanted to quickly comment on MV21, uh, the Via Prize Accords. Um, I'll, I'll follow up with you, Hans and Jean, but if, if uh, the submitter is uh, no longer supporting that proposal, I have to point out that um, the description as it was submitted originally two years ago is really not consistent with what's being discussed, you know, under mediation and, and beyond. Um, so if the submitter is not supporting it, it's probably cleaner just to, uh, you know, get rid of that project. Um, and we'll figure out how to fund it otherwise. Thanks. Thank you. Well, the submitter wanted to pass it on to, to Paul O'Leary. I don't know whether that's... We can just confirm before voting night that submitter still wants the project. Does So can he pass it on to somebody else or not? Is that a... Well, what is a... I, I don't think you need to pass it on. If it's If somebody wants it done, Okay. That's the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he was going to pass it on because he didn't want to bring, it, it, you know, get a lot of people it, involved. Just have him formally put his name on because that's one of the, that's one of the 2020 projects. Okay. So it never was actually formally voted as a project. Mm -hmm. It's been recently. Well, he's still in support of the project. Yeah. yeah. And haven't put his name on it as a okay. leader. And change it over. Okay. Any other member of the public with a hand up, Lisa? Yep, I have uh, Tammy Jennings. Go ahead, Tammy. Hi, yes, I'm sorry. I just have a quick question because I don't know when this is going to end. Um, if I'm not going to be around for the community-wide processing next week, is that going to be a problem? Or sh or um, I just don't know what, what's going to happen. I just know I won't be around for the next one. No, the next one is two weeks, and we'd be doing the same kind of comments on citywide. However, there is going to be another, then there's a series of two uh, meetings, which are really the public comment meetings for it. So citywide for that one would be on June 2nd. Okay. All right. Thank you. So you'll have uh, opportunity there as well. So. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other member of the public or 
commission have a hand up? Okay. Nope, that was yeah. it. Okay, seeing none, let's move on to New Monterey. And our last neighborhood this evening, but our largest as well. Um, so in New Monterey, um, these also did not fit on one sheet. So I've got two pages of just the list of projects. Um, project number three is the Calam Reservoir, which was a design and study that has been completed. Um, project number six, uh, Dickman Hawthorne ADA improvements, um, that has been completed. Project um, 25, we'll discuss when we get there. But those two projects have been completed um, and will not be discussed going forward through the rest of the list. I'll start going through with project number one. Um, this was a project that was proposed. It's the intersection of private Bolio and Lighthouse. Um, and they're, um, I keep hearing about a pork chop of this thing. So they wanted uh, like curb ball bouts and trying to make it a safer um, intersection somehow. But this is a, a project, $250,000 that we have towards a good project. Um, project number two is David Avenue and Terry Street. Um, there has been, there, so there are actually three projects in New Monterey that are about crosswalks on David Avenue. So we're hoping that we can combine them or, you know, just like we we're doing in uh, Monterey Vista. New Monterey project number two, we're thinking is the design and study to see where the best location to approve something would be on there. Um, project uh, number five was previously funded and then defunded in 2020. And there was a new submission also for project number 32 that we'll get to for another crosswalk, but they're Similar projects are all on um, David Avenue, and we're hoping that we can do a study to find where the best location to install a crosswalk would be before we put money into construction. Project number four is for the repair and restoration of the Sloat Monument on the Lower Presidio. Picture of it there. Project number five, again, this was for actually constructing the sidewalk um, originally, they were thinking at David, but um, there, if there's a better location, we want to just confirm that uh, we're putting it in the right spot for traffic and pedestrians. Project number seven um, is for two radar speed signs. Um, this is, well, it's a little unusual, but it's still two radar speed signs. So we have a cost on it of $45,000. David Avenue right now has one existing radar speed sign um, on the upper right photo there that's going uphill and the neighbors have asked for one that goes downhill then on prescott which is the photo in the lower bottom there is an existing speed sign that goes downhill but they're looking to put one um, uphill at um uh, it was cypress street uh, where the blue star is on the photo there because um, of sight line issues. So it still ends up being two radar speed signs that they're asking for. Project number eight, uh, Belden Street and Drake Avenue. There's open space acquisition. This was a project that was originally approved in 2015. Um, we put $300,000 on for this one. This was defunded. Um, that project has been on the market recently. Um, project number 11 is for Hilltop Park Center is a repurposing analysis and study um, phase one of that. So it's to see what could be done to the existing, it's an elementary, well, elementary school up there um, th that would be needed to make it into a, like a just completely a uh, center, like a community center, so. You mean use it better, because it is a center already. Yes, 
and okay. and like I've been up there and I have to kneel to get a drink from the you know yeah no I mean it but it yeah it's used as a center but to use it more effectively correct correct updating um, project number fourteen was for a decomposed granite walkway repair. And uh, this project was submitted and approved in 2016. And um, it's been, um, since that time, it's been re well repaired. And it looks like this. So this is a good one to get in touch with the uh, original submitter to see if they want to do anything different than this. From the original proposal, what was there before? Um, there's no, the curb was, this has all been done like within the past year. But now there's a curb on the, back side of the DG um, walkway. This, um, even a year ago, I think was just kind of all bumpy and um, just in need of repair, but um, work has been done on it. So it may be um, something that could be withdrawn. If the applicant agrees. Uh, project number 15 is on Divisadero. Spell that. Um, 700 block right at the top on um, this. They're looking for a drainage swell. Um, this would be on the uh, north side of the street. This is looking back towards David. So Pacific Grove is actually on the left side of the street and Monterey is on the, on the right side, but it's just for a drainage swell along that. There's the map on the lower left. Um, Project number 18, this is for Cannery Row for a public restroom design. Um, this again is one that we would um, hope that we could complete a study to see where and how many restrooms are needed throughout the city um, for this one. Uh, number 19 was a project approved in 2018 for we have a cost of $27,000 for additional lighting and I believe there was a some like treatment at the end of the stairs on there as well to make it more visible at nighttime. Project number 20 is Taylor Street 600 block there's a stabilized uh, decomposed granite walkway and the issue with this project right now, this is looking toward the Taylor Street gate down at the end of the street. Um, that goes into the Presidio. Um, is the existing trees that are there really kind of preclude um, putting a concrete sidewalk in over here? So at this time, we're thinking that it would make sense to do a design so that when the trees were uh, no longer there, we could come in and, and redo it. Project number 21 is David Avenue Open Space Acquisition and Cleanup. Um, this is right across the street from the Hilltop Center. Um, at the top of the hill there, there's like the last parcel in the city of Monterey, right over here that um, is owned by MPUSD. Um, this would be, there would be some cleanup to be done um, and then kind of acquiring it from the school district who have indicated to the, the neighborhood rep anyway that um, they would be willing to discuss that. Project number 22 is for a uh, concrete sidewalk in front of 1740 Prescott Avenue. Um, there, I don't know if you can see, but there's an existing concrete walk that ends here. We've got the, the corner, the ramps built at the corner, and then it's decomposed granite from here up to the driveway. And so they're just looking to have that um, completed concrete. Project number 23 is Oak Street. So um, there's design and construction required for this and the, the preliminary price for the full project is $800,000. This project was originally submitted in 2019 and approved for a half of the construction cost. So um, what we're thinking at this point is, well, it would be up to the submitter, but um, we could combine it into one project for 800,000, or if we wanted to leave it as half, we can leave it at 400,000 for this half. And then project number 25 is the other half, 
which would be another 400,000. But project number 24 um, is the David Avenue at Pine Street for LED stop signs. Um, that's it's an $8,000 project. This one was also brought up to the uh, traffic advisory committee and they were not necessarily in favor of this project. Um, the, there were safety issues that um, they mentioned, like when people get used to seeing the flashing LED lights, if they're not working for some reason, people are more likely to blow right through the intersection. So, so they want it or not want it? The traffic advisory committee did not want this one. Okay, so if the traffic advisory committee doesn't approve it, it's not a project. Okay. Because they won't build it. Okay. That's why we go there. It's either it's doable or it's not. Not a sort of. <laughs> right. I'm trying to be too diplomatic, huh? Yeah, I just uh, the, yeah. Um, project number 29, this was one um, just for a Frisbee golf putting zone at Oak Newton Park. When I went to the Parks and Rec Committee or Commission last week, um, this was one they weren't sure about whether it fell within their mandate. Um, and I wasn't exactly sure why, but they're on the fence about this, this project um, with, as with well. Parks and Rec, it's... That's not like traffic where it kills it if they're against it. That's they they tell us it's on the thing and we take it into account, but it still is a viable project. Okay. So that would not be about how having a this wouldn't be in their purview, but I yeah, but and, uh, yeah, I wasn't a hundred percent clear on that as well. But um I know that they were concerned about like frisbees in the road and people getting hit and things like that. So that was mentioned anyway. Project number um, 32 is the other David Avenue crosswalk um, study that we would like to combine with uh, project uh, two and five, but the Terry Avenue that was previously approved. And then project 33, Lane Street at Drake. This is one uh, you can see on the left side there. Um, the again, the ramps are in place or the sidewalk is there at the intersection, but then there's a big gap um, to where the, the sidewalk starts down some distance down the street. Uh, we had a price of or cost estimate of $30,000 for that one. Then project number 34 is the Aeneas Bridge at Cannery Row, the restoration study. So this is one of the three underfunded projects or the three active projects. This one is underfunded. We've got a, a proposal from a firm to do the study that's required before we can actually get in there and start um, renovating and even painting the, the, the structure. Um, but the money that was left I think it was allocated at 25,000 in 20, well, previously, um, but that, that wasn't enough. The, the estimate to do the report was closer to $30,000. So um, this would be a good one to come back and get um, from contingency funding. And then um, project number 35 was actually to begin some of the work um, from that study and actually begin uh, repairing that and painting. And, and if there's structural uh, repairs required um, to get on that as well. And that is it for New Monterey. Okay, Tanira, you wanna to speak to any of the Yes, uh, I just have a question just for my understanding. If uh, projects were recommended to be combined, would that be going back to the submitter to submit something new or how, how does that work? Generally, you would need to, uh, not to submit new, but if they are okay with combining, then yeah, you could uh, indicate to, to Tom to have them combined. But generally the submitter of the project would have to be okay with combining it with the other locations and basically changing it from 
you know, three individual crosswalks to a study to determine where, and then the question is, do you want to have it where and funds to build one or not would be, you know, what would the change be? Just to study or to find a location and build it? It's, it's kind of, you know, it's the submitters would need to, to be willing to modify their product. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that's something we can follow up with them. So uh, projects two, five, and 32, we can follow up with the submitter. And then um, let's see, there's a question about uh, new Monterey 15, about whether it would be measure P or S funding. Okay. Yeah, it is drainage. I mean, storm drainage was part of PNS. But this is new right now. Yeah, that was that um, Cody's telling me, so I believe him. Um, yes, that can be under PRS because yeah, it's a dream. See if it's actually part of what's planned or not. Right. Okay. That's a new swale, not a right. Not a, but it's drainage and storm drainage was yes. part of the okay. remit Something of PNS. But whether or not they have it planned is 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 the question mark. Not all of them made the grade. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's so. Yeah, would, Tom, if you guys could check to see if yes. it's if it's doable, and are they thinking it could be done within it in the funding that's available? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. Yes. So we did actually get a lot of um, a lot of interaction about uh, Project Twenty Four. So that's the LED stop signs. Um, and we did um, hear about the traffic uh, committee not being a fan of that. So one thing that we talked about was maybe going back to the submitter and seeing if they would uh, want to amend it for like a reflective paint instead of the um, instead of the flashing lights. So we could follow up on that. Okay. I think that was major stuff. See. And then there was a question about um, Project 33 and the corners being ADA compliant. Yeah, that that from this photo, I can tell you that one is not in, compliant. In which case, if you guys could check to see if that's on the ADA list to be changed, because if we do fund the sidewalk coming in, it would make sense to have that. ADA change is done at the same time so that you're lining everything up. And we don't want the ADA piece of it being forced on us to do a sidewalk. Then. <laughs> right, right. Since PNS pays for ADA. And actually, while there's a two second pause, I got a text from uh, Steve Witchery saying that. Uh, measure P is not available for drainage on the visitor. Okay. Okay. And then, did we talk about four? Did you bring that one up? Because I think there's a question about lease renewal. Let's see. That's the uh, lower Presidio Park. Oh, yes, that's, um, yeah, we don't know about that yet. What, so this is it, just uh, to. The the park was, the original lease was for until when? Do we know? We'll, we'll let's check that. Okay. And we get some answers for you on this one. That's all the notes I have. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Chair. Any other members of the committee have questions or any of the new Monterey projects? Anyone have their hands up? We have Mayor Clyde. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Uh, great meeting you all. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I had a question about the Aeneas Bridge. 
is that, uh, does the city of Monterey own that? Is that public property or private property? Obviously that would uh, change the viability of this submittal. Thank you. According to our notes that we have in front of us, it says city owned Aeneas Bridge. Yes, it's within the right of way. Because it's in the right of way. But that doesn't mean we necessarily own it because I don't think the city owns the other bridges along there necessarily. But we might just want to double check who owns it. Mm -hmm. Good question. Because it may be, it, it can be in the city right away, but because of an encroachment permit, not right. because it's actually owned by the city. Right. I would think we would have looked into that when it was funded originally, but I don't know. <laughs> was that it, Mr. Mayor? Yes, it was. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate uh, you all. Uh, and we appreciate you as well. A any other hands up? The yeah, public. Richard. Sorry about that, Richard. Go ahead, Richard. Yes. Uh, Tom, you skipped over New Monterey. 26 and 27. Can you explain why? They're citywide. They're now in the citywide? Yep. Okay. Citywide 50 and citywide 51. Yes. And, and the, the question would be this has come before us year after year. But the Parks and Rec Commission and the City Council has That's already ruled meeting. on it. That's for next meeting. It's a citywide project. Okay. I just wanted Tom to check that out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Jamie? Uh, just checking my notes, and I see I have a question here on New Monterey 11. I have down a cost of 100000 and I have down notes that say that was just a study. Correct. So we usually studies are in the twenty thousand yes. dollar range. Yeah, and that was the so that uh, my recollection is that well, let's confirm that before we go. I when I was going through to I had in my notes that it was a hundred thousand. I thought wow, that's kind of I had the same thought. So we'll confirm um, the amount. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's study and implementation or a well, preliminary. But I think we should only fund the study at this point because otherwise it's putting money. We have no idea of implementation of what. Yes. It might not be enough to implement anything. Right. Uh, any other questions of New Monterey? I have one more we're going through, but I can't remember right now. It just on the on the Oak Street, we will need to have confirmation that the people who live on the street still support okay. having it widened because it impacts parking and other things on there. I know it would have been gotten beforehand when it was funded originally, but that's back in 2019. So mm -hmm. I was going to say, would it help the representative to have copies of the old sign off from the neighbors? Is it kind of a talking might, point? I don't know where that would be. Would that be? In, Alyssa be knows. In, yeah, she it, finds. Yeah, if you could get that to the the new yes. Monterey rep, so they see who you know signed off. That way, they can just confirm that people still want that. Okay. No other comments. Uh, uh, we'll close this part of the the meeting, and we'll go to commissioner comments. And we might be out of here by 9.15. Uh, anyone up at the dais have any comments? Dennis? Given that this is the first year back after a couple of years, I think we have to um, um, monitor our appetite for projects because I think we're not gonna have that much funds. So kind of looking at the list tonight going, oh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Okay. April, any comments? Jamie? Good to work with you all again. Okay. 
Glad to see that we'll be able to come back here face to face. I think we can get a lot of things accomplished. And still work along with the protocols. And hope that uh, we also get enough engineering time to be able to <laughs> build the project. Hans, your, your mic is off. Thanks. I hope that uh, we actually, uh, given the amount of engineering time we have, that we actually get to build the projects that we uh, fund this year. And uh, I am a little concerned about um, getting back to a position where we have projects going years and years without being built. So I'm hoping that we can restaff and uh, get these projects going in a timely manner. But uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad we are all back together and I really appreciate being funded again. <laughs> I'm Raleigh, I'll second what Dennis said about, you know, it's a big list. As a new person here, I'm enthusiastic and happy to be here and I look forward to doing more meetings like this as the new person. When everything's new, it's all fun, right? <laughs> and I'll go reverse order of neighborhoods for those who are uh, doing it remotely. Dwayne, do you have any comments you'd like? No, it's just good to be back in the saddle. Okay. Uh, Luce, are you still with us? Do you have any comments? No comment. Okay. Chinieri, welcome. And do you have any comments? Uh, just thank you, because this is my first time going through this process, and I'm learning a lot, so thank you. Okay. Kurt, do you have any comments? Okay. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, we can. Okay. So a couple of comments. Uh, one, Tom, if you could please put, I, I don't have any, or the, the data packet did not have the numbers in it it would be really helpful this is the engineer of me coming out but i need a spreadsheet listed with the numbers so i can go through and, and do some sorting on that so so i have that before voting night yes the second thing is i think we really need to agendize a discussion around voting night because tom's doing his best and he's just giving us estimates so as we go into voting night, how many more projects are we gonna go before we run out of funding? Or how many, how much contingency are we gonna need? Because we really don't have exact numbers. So I think we need to have a discussion before we get to voting night on exactly how many projects we're going to get. And then if we reach that funding limit, do we get more, do we get less, do we increase the funding? So I'd like to have a discussion around that. And then other than that, it's good to be back and I look forward to voting night. Thanks. The, the plan, some preliminary discussions in our last agenda meeting was for voting night to have, or in advance of voting night, having a agendized regarding actually the committee to meet regarding contingency and what level to recommend on voting night to go and how and where the cutoff is going to be and how is that going to work since uh, estimates are going to be fine-tuned after they know the project. So my intention would be to have prior to us voting, we settle those two, those two items. Uh, and any others that we come up with between now and then as well. So it's a very clean streamline as much as possible voting night. Uh, Dave, do you have any comments? No, no comments. Richard. Yes, uh, I want to uh, uh, thank everybody there that this is the smoothest meeting, hybrid meeting I've ever attended. It went very well. I do have a question about the next meeting. You mentioned two weeks. Are you saying May 5th, the tentative meeting is canceled? Well, th there on the agenda, there was a filler in case right. we didn't complete everything tonight, and that would have been next week. I think May 5th is the next meeting. Okay. And my next comment is, uh, if we're going to do a 
if it's if it's possible to do a hybrid meeting in June for voting night, uh, we have those voting numbers we hold up. I don't know if we're gonna do the same process this year, but I'd like to hear about what the process will be. The voting numbers is the process. How we would do that in a hybrid or not is open yeah. question. It's not up to us. Basically, it's going to come down to when the council, no, actually, it's the state continuing to allow hybrid meetings. If they change that, we would have to be in person. Yes. Uh, if the state continues, the governor continues to allow hybrid and the city council is still having right. that route, we would be hybrid. How we do that with the sign, because how you're going to see it all at one time, I don't know. <laughs> Well, split screen, it would show. Uh, yeah, but if you have to be on a phone because you can't connect, how do you That's different. That? Yeah, that's different. I, I don't um, know. I have to get some feedback right. from city attorney. And, and the other part, the documents I've received by email, uh, we need to get up-to-date documents with the price estimates on it and uh, all the uh, projects that were completed removed from the list. So we got a clean sheet to work from because it's it's quite complicated now. So that's my only comment, uh, but I thought it went very well. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for, as my comments, uh, for helping this go smooth. Uh, I think it went a little bit quicker than we might have traditionally in the past. Jamie and I and April and I were talking about, in part because the lion's share of these projects we've seen before. So it wasn't like in the past where we'd have 50 or 60 brand new projects and we're diving in a whole lot more. I also want to particularly thank Elisa for helping me with the hands up. The challenge with running this meeting from the dais is I don't get to see any, the hands up and the things which I do when I do it from a, a Zoom when I do it at home. Mm -hmm. uh, next week, I will actually not be here. I'll be out of town, but I will be running the meeting remote. So. Alyssa, you'll have it a little bit easier because I can call on people. But thank you so much for helping me out on that tonight. No problem. And actually, speaking of, um, I do have a couple of raised hands, but I don't know if you're accepting um, panelists and attendee hands any longer or comments. I mean, from panelists, yes. From that's this is only panelist time frame, not uh, general public. That this is commission so, comments. So then, this is actually Kurt. I think Kurt, do you and did you intend to raise your hand again, or was that from before? No, that was from before. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And our our other raised hand is a, an attendee, but it is an alternate for one of our neighborhoods. So I don't know. Yes, we'll go ahead and have them speak since they're an alternate. Okay, doke. So it's Tammy. So Tammy Jennings. Again, I'm sorry. I just wanted to know the date of the actual voting or that and also the date of the night that people can speak okay here we go the uh fifth is the second meeting like this one for the rest of the neighborhoods and citywide that's the fifth of may the 19th of may is the first of the public comment meetings so it would be uh aguajito oaks to new monterey on June 2nd is the second half, so that would be Oak Grove through Citywide. And voting night is June 16th. Thank you very much. And, and also on for any public who's watching as well, on the website is the actual schedule as well. So if anyone else has questions or you can refer people to the website for that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, do we have any other hands up, Alisa? Nope, that was it. Not, I think that does it, right? We can adjourn.